and said, we have not really hardened our courts because now you have, you know, just a few people not going through the legislature to make laws, but they're ruling from the bench and changing. So even their attorney general said, we had no idea this would happen. Never thought in a million years. And they say the Republican are judges, right? So somebody's gotten to them. There's something going on that's absolutely Well, I mean, look at the, we look at the judges in the, in the Nephites. <coughs> yeah. Know, the they corruption of the judges. We, we have that model, and, and it's horrible. It's just horrible. And in New York, they're also using billions of tax dollars to set up these houses mm -hmm. to let people come shoot uh, shoot up and lay there and use their drugs. Use, use your drugs. Is this in a Austin? Clean, safe place? No, that was in New, New York. York. Oh. This is no, New York. Austin. Oh, that Austin. That happened in Texas. Well, no, that was it. There, it's like their highest court in Texas over. Yeah. yeah. So we can we can see there's there's conspiring. There's efforts going on that are and going on. Yeah. Just like um, I don't know, you know, they they turned down that law um, in the in the Senate that they wanted to to fund. I'm trying to remember what oh, the, it is. the federal elections. Yeah. And so what did they do? They stuck it in a NASA bill, yeah. trying to sneak it through. Yeah. They're they're evil, yeah, evil, they're, they're. corrupt people. And it's we have to keep our eye on it. And the legislature just started this week. Chris Kimball's been sending stuff out, so we need to keep an eye on what's going on here as well. So. Yeah, the mass mandates, Timothy. Yeah. But, um, and then to bring it back to what we're doing today, there's two paths, right? One is to safeguard your law, the other is to draw closer to God, right? So we have both sides of that, and as women learning, there's a way, there's a, a very unique way to connect to God. And... We and I have her a lot of times. Oh yeah, and God is working through people, which this is such an amazing story. Um, so Robin next week will be teaching. We'll send out creation the information. In the creation. Room. So we'll see what's going to be the next week. I, uh, Cassidy Gunderson reached out to me. Her husband, um, the Lord came to him and showed him how to make um, not holistic. Um, what is the other thing? Homeopathy? A kind of a homeopathy, ivermectin. Oh. oh. So all the problems we're having getting ivermectin, he had, the Lord gave him the formula to make a homemade ivermectin. Is that just like following next week? Um, we're, I gotta, we got to work out the details with her. If it won't be next week, it could possibly the, be the week after. So hello, Colleen. Hi. So and anyway, um, I'm excited. I spent a couple hours with TJ the other day, and he was showing me his work, and his story is so exciting because it's again the Lord's working through regular people, giving them great things so that we can get prepared for our Savior's second coming. So TJ, I'm going to introduce you just as said TJ. TJ, sorry, so I'm, he, I'm going to let him tell his own story. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank I'll you. just say that we oh, know oh. that LDSPMA, which is the publishing LDS Publishing Media Association, um, back in October, where he was the featured artist, one of the featured artists, and um, the minute I walked in, just like you, this was, that was oh. my, okay. Tell me your story, and so it, it was really awesome. He's just I could just feel his spirit was. So, do you want to use the key to your hair? Well, yeah, you well, just go okay. because I'm still not excited. Okay, so I, I grew up in Cedar City until I was about 10, and then we moved up there to Grayville. Um, I went to Westridge Elementary, oh, yeah. and then um, Dixon and Provo High, and I've lived in Provo, Aura. Mapleton, Springville area, on my adult life. Was your dad a, a pharmacist? My dad? Uh -huh. No. Okay. He uh, taught at BYU and UVU. He's a teacher. Okay. Uh, well, did, did you, you go to, let him go? Well, did you go to Westridge the first year or that it was there? Or no, it was, um, I was in sixth grade when I was okay. there. I taught there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you taught me, I don't know. Well, no, not, I did teach you teaching. That's why I asked. It yeah, he's, you're 50? I'm 49. 49. So, yeah. 
Oh, I Mike, let's Mike. see if we can let him go <laughs> like this without interrupting too much so he can get yeah. into all Does he have a mic on? Yes. Oh. Don't you have a, the lavalier? Oh, it's right there. Okay. Can you hear? And I'm seeing it now, so we're fine. Okay. So if we want to use TV, I could move this. And everybody can everybody see. Everybody can see everything. Okay. Are you You're good. good. Yeah. Okay. We're just waiting for Mike and Nancy to get it started. Full screen. Full screen. This one's how this is. That's the look of it. So that's going to work fine. We'll start doing that. Okay, this is good. I'll, let's start with this one. Well, let's start. No, you still have a Um. Okay, so, and then I, uh, so when I was in high school, I kind of got in with the crowd that doesn't do the right thing. Um, and so I had to repent for a year and a half before I served my mission. And but I learned a lot through going through all that stuff. And that has a lot to do with where I am today. I know a lot about addiction. I've been addicted to everything. Um, and then now I know how to get out of it. And that it's possible no matter how low you go. So I went to South Carolina on a mission. And the angel oak is in South Carolina. And when I, I went and saw this tree, stand underneath and it's so huge. It, goes underground and comes up in other places and all the branches are on the ground. And so when I was uh, like, oh, I need to have a model for the tree and I thought of the angel oak and I looked up this picture and that's um, the angel oak is the tree of life. Um, so I uh, came home from my mission and my wife lived in our neighborhood when I was in high school, and she was four years younger than me, so when I moved in, she was 14, and, um, but I'll never forget the first time I saw her. Um, and so we got married, and we have four, um, four kids. Tell us about that, when you first saw her. Oh. Is new? <laughs> <laughs> She's hot. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was sitting on my couch in the living room, and there was a little, um, gap in the curtains and I saw her walk by and I was like whoa and so I just <laughs> I ran up and looked through the curtain and I had my eye on her the whole time I just I waited when I got home from my mission I just had a thought to go see her and we went mountain biking and uh she fell in a puddle and <laughs> uh, yeah it was it was fun <laughs> <laughs> so we got married <laughs> um yeah, amazing kids. I love my kids. Um, and so when I, um, I should probably put the, the first. Um, you ready, Nancy? We might as well start at the beginning. Well, we were trying to get these. We were talking last night. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah a lot of a lot of them. So I don't know what you want to do. Oh, okay. So. Go back to the beginning. I'll just load them then. So when did you start one? doing this? Oh, so it was 2017. Oh, um, shocking. Yeah, and I've just been in my basement this whole time. Just. So did you have a dream, or <coughs> did you have a dream? It started visions? with uh, the dream. Started with um, a little boy named Wyatt, and he was um, so the first painting. You can go to the, um, the hand one. This one? Yeah. Are they all on there? Here, we'll just do this. This one right here? <coughs> we can do both. I'll put this on this. this. And then you can, you can go to the... So just load the rest, and then TJ, if you want to point at the painting. Yeah, and I can. There's we just talked to him there's last a, night, and we, and we stayed up late to get him, and then I just didn't ever. We didn't get him. So I went to bed like one. There we go. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so when I when I saw this the first time, it was only this, and it was Wyatt was working his, um, planning his life here with the Lord, 
and and he he'd say things like, "Well, what do you want to learn?" And if it was, "I want to learn to love my enemy," he would say, "Well, then I'll send you one." And sometimes our enemies are in our family. <laughs> um, sometimes we're married to him. No, I I love my wife. We don't fight very much. Um, so he. And I, I could feel everything he was feeling in the premortal life. We all had this connection of, we just share everything, and we. That's what this this stone is is that represents us sharing everything about us. It's our um, spiritual fingerprint, mm. and it, it's recording everything, and. When we share that with someone, we feel it, we experience it with them in a way that it's like we're as, as if we are them. And so I could feel everything Wyatt was experiencing. And when he came to earth, he was, he couldn't do anything for himself. His mom had to feed him and clothe him, do everything for him. Was he mentally, mentally yeah, challenged? So he's, yeah, he's, so this is Tiffany. I went to high school with her. We're, we've been really good friends our whole lives. And um, so this is Wyatt. And I could feel his, you know, someone's going to have to be my parents. And he was a little nervous about that. And Tiffany came up and said, I'll be your mom. And then Sean came up after that and you know, I'll be your dad. And they planned all, all of these things out, the things that they wanted to learn. And so he died when he was five and a half. And I, I believe I had this dream within a year and a half of after he, him dying. So was he your friend or your son? He was um, Tiffany's son. So this is Tiffany and this is her husband, Sean. And I, I, I met him probably five times during his whole life. She'd come and visit me, and, and he'd be with her. And he just um, couldn't really do anything. She served him his whole life, and that's what she agreed to here. So he would show us the hard things that we're going to go through, and we just, it was this, that's impossible. There's no way I can do that. I don't want to go through that. And then he'd show us the other end of it, the things we'd learn, and we're like, oh, I want that. <laughs> I want that right now. And that's what would make us come here, is the things we learned. But we knew it was going to be really hard, impossible sometimes. And so he, after I had this dream, I just, what was that? You know, I didn't know why I had that experience. And then later he, everything I see is a mystery when I first see it. I don't just automatically understand what it means. I have to figure it out. But I love that part of it. I've grown too. At first it was really frustrating. Um, but it grows and you start to learn how he works with you. And so Wyatt, I could feel his spirit and he's just telling me, you have to tell my mom about this. Cause she was having a rough time with what just happened. You know, she has this child, and and then when he dies, she's like, you know, I don't. What was that? And so I got, I found her number, and I called her, and we just talked on the phone, and I told her this whole experience, and just crying, and and that really helped her understand more what happened, and just lifted this burden off of her. Um, so that's how this all started, was with Wyatt coming to me with this experience to help his mom. Mm. And is that Wyatt full of the ball then? So he, no, this is me. That's you. So I was, after I saw that, I was, okay, I, I'm on to something. I, I want more. And so then he showed me this whole scene. And this is me um, sharing my testimony with those that are following the darkness. Were you about Satan. that age when you had that experience? 
Um, this is actually my son. Okay. He modeled for it. But were you at that age at that time that that experience? Um, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. I, everyone looked like they were just so when you say in your prime. When you had that experience in this life, how old were you? Oh, I was. Yeah, this was. God, it must have been. I don't know exactly. Three years, four years ago? Oh, it was probably 2001 or two. Okay, so like 20 years. It was when a long time ago. I, I started having dreams when I was six years old. My first dream was when I was little. And I didn't understand it at all. And But I've, I've thought about it my, at points in my life where there's a fork in the road. And it's a really serious choice um, that helped me through things. So is the, is the dark part mortality? So this was the war in heaven. Oh, okay. So this is the pre this is the okay. pre-mortal life. And it, um, I didn't realize what was happening, but the first painting is the pre-mortal life. The second painting is while we're here, Lehi's dream. And the third painting is what happens after. Mm. Oh, that's cool. And, and this is the first painting? Yeah. Okay. And so there were um, people coming and going. All of us were doing this. All of us were. This is symbolic of us just sharing our experience in the light with people, trying to get them to come this way. <laughs> And we do that. We continue to do that here. We'll, we'll always do that. Well, the Bible dictionary under the word of election, it, it suggests that we chose our time, place, and circumstance. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a second witness. I believe so that. the dark part is the souls that are going off. The third the of the host of heavens. Yeah, and if you notice, the further they go this way, the darker their yeah. Yeah. robes get, and they just disappear into this cloud. And I don't, I don't understand this yet. <laughs> Right. There's a lot of things in these paintings. I don't. I've asked him about it, and he's like, "It's not time," and um, so I'm. I'll, I'll continue learning my whole life. Like they start as a little flash of something I see or a feeling I have, and then it kind of works its way into seeing and. So TJ, all these spirit children over on this side. They would have one of these luminescent balls or the spiritual fingerprinting, their testimonies, you know, thoughts. But as they go over there, they, obviously in the very dark, they've lost it because that's our light. Do they have any of those with them at all that are They always have, we all have them. Even they do? Yes. Okay. Um, that's our. Who we are. It's symbolic of. Yeah, it's our spiritual fingerprint from the moment we started or woke up. And it's, um, we use our agency to agree to be a part of this. We choose. And I'll go, that's in the third painting here. I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, Can I just say something? Um, yeah. Last night we were doing a consultation with um, a young artist who were commissioning to do Emma and Lucy for the Joseph Smith family reunion this summer. Um, my mom was the, the, a speaker on Lucy and, and Emma at the very beginning Hiram and Joseph Smith family reunion and I was 10 years old and we get to go back at the 50 year reunion. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's it's, it's pretty cool but I was just sharing with them I was at the Symphony Hall um, back when I was at BYU when um, Arnold Freeberg was unveiling his sacred grove and um, he talked about how every painting it's almost like it pre-existed before and and it it's like it comes close to the veil and it's um, he has it, it's his learning just like you're saying I just saw it's just a second witness that was planted you know when I when I was there and he just said it, it's like it just makes its appearance more and more as he begins to paint, and it, it's like it just takes the veil away a little bit, but it, that it pre-existed, um, and it's making itself known and present. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. And the, the, the people on the earth, when he showed me the earth, 
when they describe it as a sea of glass, that I think that means you you can see everything, and there's certain beings that can see all of it. And I told the Lord, I said, I, there's no way I can paint that. I don't know how to paint the earth. Like, I just... So he, we compromised on that, and I just, <laughs> I, you can tell it's the earth. That I, I was pretty happy about that, yeah. and I, I get certain points, and and when I got um, a little ways into it, I thought, man, this is looking really cool, and I'm gonna mess it up. <laughs> and so I, I wouldn't paint sometimes because I just felt like I'm gonna do something wrong, or I'm gonna, oh, and I, I painted the robes first, and. This is the weirdest thing. I painted his arm out like this, and I'm, and I stood back and I looked, and I'm like, "Why did I do that? I don't." And I was gonna wipe it off, and someone was like, "Just leave it." And later, I he showed me why, and it was because he's he's holding that. And but before I started doing the, so all the robes were here. There's a there's a. Um, let me see if I can. And we're showing it online right now, but you can switch to it. Okay, so is it these two arrows? Right here. Oh, okay. Go to different ones. Yes. Yeah, that, I got them over right there. Are you talking about? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the, how so you it layered shows it in. how they started. And then yeah, it shows yeah. That's how we put it together. Wow. Can you guys all see that? Yeah. I don't know. Sort of. You're in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay. <clears throat> so yeah, this is just Okay, so there's one that if you can find the one that show there there's a one that I didn't have their heads on, so it was just their clothes and it looked it was kind of funny. <laughs> um, do you do this in your spare time or do you is this your job? Or no, this you... was in my spare time. I, that's one of the reasons I said no is be, in the beginning is because I, I knew, I'm like, how long is this going to take? And I'd spend hours and hours down there sometimes. Th I think 14 hours was the longest I worked on. It was the night I painted Eve. And, oh, that was, that was really cool. Um, so. You want, tell us more about how your dreams are. Like, do you have a certain guide? Is it the Savior? I mean, what happens no, it's, in a dream? Um, so it, a lot of times it starts, when they talk about the Holy Spirit, it talks about a small feeling, like a, a small voice. And sometimes it starts out like that, like just a feeling. And then it'll, if I entertain that, if I think about it and ponder about it, then it grows and it turns into... And then sometimes I'll hear things, and and if when that's filled, then I I'll, I can see, and it's like your faith just starts small and it grows in that thing, and so this kind of just accumulated into this. Um, when Lehi says, "I imagined," if you close your eyes and think of a strawberry, that's where he shows me things, and I can see him. Whenever I want, they're just like memories. Like I'm remembering it. So the scriptures do talk about vain imaginations, but it, uh, part of Pride, I believe, talked about imagination. Like, I mean, it's both. So whether whatever we use is mm -hmm. what we put our faith in. And so I just took what was in here and put it there. And when I said yes, I had only seen this, um, as far as what I was supposed to paint, I had only seen this small thing here. Mm -hmm. And then once I agreed to do this, um, he started showing me more. And it just started in the middle and kind of, and then I saw this whole thing and I remembered this experience being here. That's what it, it started out as this little seed and it grew into this. And then I thought, when I finished this, I was like, sweet, I'm done. Because <laughs> you go through things when you're trying to find him. And I was, I had just gotten off um, painkillers. I got addicted to those, and I was an alcoholic for a long time. And when I 
I went to rehab. I've been to several different types of rehab. Um, they work. <laughs> um, no, don't give up. Um, the main thing to me is you've had no formal training. And I see this and I'm just, you're pe the people. <coughs> and that is the hardest thing to yes. paint is hands and faces and, and they're just beautiful. They're spectacular. Well, and it's almost like you have to fight for these things. You have to, you know, I, I had gone a long time um, when I was had been clean for a year. I was, that was like just a breath of air. I just, I was so glad to be there and just to have the hard, the hardest things behind me. I mean, just going through withdrawals and all of that. But that, um, I think it's how we obtain honor is when we go through hard things and we pull out of them. You know, it's this, I, I did that. You know, I went through that. And I was to that point, and I was like, sweet. And I'm like, now what? And, and then I, I had to, um, like Joseph Smith says, you know, find a good cause and be a part of it. I had to replace all of that stuff with something else. And that was terrifying to me. When I got to my year mark of being clean, I just, and then I started missing it. I, I was like, what am I doing? I was so happy back here, numb. You know, I didn't want to deal with any of this stuff. Because pulling through those things is hard. And, you know, I'd go in my living room at night and just rock back and forth and count to 10 over and over all night long. And then I have to go to work. What kind of work do you do? I do construction. Yeah, I, I fell in love with that, with building. Creating. Uh, yeah. He builds houses. So, so that figure mm -hmm. in the lower right. Here? Yeah. Is that, she's turning away from the light? Is yeah, so this is, um, so this guy's walking back. This guy, um, he, I think I know him, but he, um, wasn't very nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is. Um, is he people. coming back to the light? No, he's walking away. Oh. Okay. Um, this guy's coming back. So, and when we would talk someone into following Christ, you know, this, she's starting to turn light again. Um, this is actually a picture of my wife and her best friend at, like the, at her wedding. Like she's bringing talking to somebody and trying to get like a blonde girl in front of her to come back. Yeah, they're, um, they're embracing. Yeah, looks like she's trying to bring her back. Yeah. Right? You can see a little more detail right here, too. Right. It's a little more brilliant color. And so what do you, you see this as a kind of a division? So this is living waters. Um, and they're in everything. In the scriptures, it talks about uh, God moving along the water. Uh -huh. Moving um, along the waters. There's water in everything. Yep. Even here, we have to have water to live. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the tree of life and the spring of water that comes out. And this, this is a, it represents temples, us making covenants. Um, it's also where we dwell. There's um, dwellings there. And then there were just people, you know, waiting for their turn to come and stand before the Lord. And and the tree of life is, uh, well, there's a lot of symbolism in the tree of life, but... Um, what is the light, the flash of blue light above? Uh, I, that is, this is the division of light and darkness. Who is the figure to the left, all in, in brilliant blue? That's the Holy Ghost. And when I painted him there, I, I had no idea why I put him there and why there's blue and white light coming out of them. But I realized later this and this are, are the same. The light and the truth, right? Yes. So when I... When I the mist of darkness is like the color of blood. Um, 
Satan's power is the color of blood. Um, that's how I saw it. <laughs> and these are um, coming out of the light. <clears throat> I believe those are represent eternities. And the little the, universes that are... They yeah. look like discs, <clears throat> moving uh, discs. Yeah, I had a hard time with those. Um, how to make them not look like flying saucers. <laughs> you can tell they're universes, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I spent like, a lot of time like eternity. going, learning how to paint paint that. That was that was really difficult. Um, <laughs> the Hubble, um, Mike, what do you call it? Telescope, the Hubble te telescope. When it looks out, it does. It looks like that painting. Right. It looks like these spheres, right? Kind of different angles and yeah. solar systems, like right. beyond, beyond. <clears throat> Galaxies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the sun, the moon, and the earth. The three degrees of glory are here. Is that supposed to be the moon in front of the earth? Right yeah. Left? Yeah. Yeah. And this is these are temples. Yeah. And so I'm I'm just and he would he would tell me don't go looking for information, just focus on what I'm showing you and. And I would, sometimes I'd put things in the paintings that I thought of, and I'd have to fix it. He'd say, no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't that, show you that. Is that the sun off in the distance? The yeah, the moon? yeah, right here? Yeah. So this is the sun, this is the moon. So that's, uh, so I, I think we're, the earth is in a telestial state right now. And that represents the stars, so the, the, the sun, the moon, and where we are now. And I don't, I don't understand. I don't think I'll ever understand the Holy Ghost completely in this life. Um, but I do know that the similarities between him here and this, there's a correlation there. Wow, I think that's amazing. That's so Can you tell us about this part right here? Oh, so this, this just represents power? Satan's power. And it's, it's always trying to Overtake. snuff out the light, and it can't. And it, it just, it goes into nothing. It disappears. It's cleaning out all the dirt like a black hole. Like yeah, a I, I, <laughs> I'm, uh, right. I'm not... I don't know about that yet. I'm I'm still. The timing's not now. I don't know. It's. You just know the Lord said paint it. And it's, all I know is it's in opposition to this. Right. And so, is this painting after the war in heaven? This is the war in heaven. This is the war. In heaven. Yeah. Because there's there's absolutely no doctrine on this, but I have often wondered, the third part of the hosts of heaven. Is there an opportunity for them to turn back to the light, or is it done for eternity? I don't think we have an answer on that. I think your painting is, it, it, it just brings up more questions and not answers. <laughs> but I think it's something that's interesting to well, think about. Well, any painting that people are coming back. That's right. But this is pre-existence. Yeah. They had a chance still to maybe right. come yeah. back. I don't know. I, oh. I, I it, don't have an answer It to felt that. like to me that it, that it was almost necessary for us to I mean that represents while we're here on earth we get into things right. you know we experience evil we experience darkness whether we're doing it to ourselves or others are doing it to us we're doing it to other people every day so it brings up the concept that this is an eternal process mm -hmm. right it did it's not just pre-existent because time is right so this is ongoing even oh, yeah. here, it's ongoing. Well, this is doctrinal because we know the, the concepts that are taught. But the interesting thing is this is the lesson. That we, all beauty is cr created in contrast. Mm -hmm. And that we get to claim the parts that we create. And we have co create. No, but all I'm saying is we think it, there's something pre-existence, then here, then after. But this appears like our time might be before, here, and after. But it, all of this 
is going on because that battle between light and darkness is eternal, ongoing, yes. you know. So there ever. are other beings in this stage right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. we right don't know yes. for what, you know, all those maybe, other constellations. Maybe this, maybe this will help, and I'll, <clears throat> I'll maybe talk about this later too, but when I had the experience seeing Eve, uh, I saw her with Cain and Abel, and she still loves Cain, and she still loves Abel, and like, she'll never <clears throat> give up. But maybe what happens, you know, with all the, because we're made of intelligences, and the everywhere's full of intelligence. If, you, if God is organizing the intelligence, and some intelligence wants to ascend, and some intelligence doesn't, and you're made up of different intelligence, then once it goes back into what perdition or wherever it goes, it disassembles. It, it's not organized anymore. So you have those intelligences that you would reorganize again. And maybe in time they they would. I don't know. So one of, another feeling I that I remembered is there's there's certain intelligence and matter that that attach themselves to light, and those things um, have the capacity to to grow and to self sustain, and they love being that thing. Things over here were just kind of dead because there's no promise and anything it's just he lives off of this and he doesn't have any power of himself when you read the story of Job you know he he has to get power from the Lord to do those things and I don't know it's, it's not even fair <laughs> <laughs> but anyone that follows the darkness when they have an opportunity to turn to the light they don't think, well, maybe I should stop doing this or better myself. They think, oh, I, need, I just need to think of a better lie. I need to think of a, of a better way to deceive. And they'll never stop. They think they can all, and that's how Satan, he'll never know the mind of God because he doesn't turn to it. He just, I need to trick him better. He, he, his plan was to trick the light, to lie to it, and he can't do that. And that was the father saying, I already know that doesn't work. But we had to learn that for ourselves because we yeah. fall for it regularly. Yes. Right, that's what it's feeling like. This is like this macro picture, but our lives individually, every moment, is the micro picture, right? Mm -hmm. you, that darkness light is constant within your own yeah, mind. Yeah. Until you, so you're saying you know how to get over addiction, but it's almost like until you say, I'm, I'm just... I'm just following you. I'm just following the light. I'm just not, I'm done with lies. And it's through following him that you shed this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just, I mean, I'm still struggling with things, and I always will, but I know I can trust this. And I turn to him every time now, and I almost look forward to going through things because that's how we learn. That's... And all, all of the things I'm going through are because of things that happened to me starting as a child for my whole life. You know, we don't get what we want. We, you know, people hurt us. You know, they hurt us intentionally sometimes. Can um, we have them a little better on iPads so you can just shrink them up and answer it? Is it better to show it here? Well, that way she can zoom in. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Great. So yeah, this it went through some some pretty cool um, or the process of everything, how things look. That's why he he told me to do this. He said every time you work on the painting, I don't care if it's ten seconds or fourteen hours. If you work on it, take a picture so you can see every hmm. stage of it. Okay, so leave it here for a minute. So I wanted to go over this. Um, so. The mist of darkness, it's always swirling around us. And so he, when he was teaching me about this, he said, when you're not keeping the commandments, when you're doing things that aren't things that I would do, things are foggy. It's like you have a fog around your, around your mind. And if you have a thought from the Lord, it, you question it. It's like, oh, I don't know, was that me or was that you? And you don't, you're not sure. Mm -hmm. And he said, when, when you follow me, 
when you walk the path that I blaze for everyone, you know, you um, are more clear Good and you, you're more sure because that's how you get to know me is every day we have, a, you know, hundreds and hundreds of decisions we make. Um, a quick example is I had zero dollars in my bank account and I went to Smith's to buy one thing and someone had gotten forty dollars change and it was just sitting right there and I thought, oh, a blessing. And then I had, no, that's not a blessing, that's, I could really use that money right now. And so, and I just looked up and I, I knew what it was and so I took the money and gave it to the woman and that's an example of I made the right choice. I've made the wrong choice too. <laughs> um, but that's, and when we make those wrong choices, we're, we don't have him with us. We have the other guy with us. And it's foggy and we don't know or we don't care. Or we fight against the light. So this right here, I thought this was cool. <laughs> the living waters coming down and creating a universe. And um, when you tell me no, I was like, oh, serious? That looks so... <laughs> Darn. <laughs> so that didn't make it in the painting, but um, it's probably not the truth in some way. I don't know. I just... And, and sometimes this happened throughout this whole process as I paint something that I had created in my own mind that he didn't show me. And... It was wrong, so I had to fix it. And I, I fixed a lot of things in this painting. I was just learning, <laughs> and. In the Universal Model, Dean Sessions teaches through the Universal Model Science, the New Millennial Science, that water is the primordial matter, and everything is created out of it. So I think it's cool that you put that water in there, and mm -hmm. the living water is in there. Yeah. So this is how, in the end, this is how it. And it's crazy. There's hidden, there's hidden things all over in these paintings, and I'm still finding things. Um, but Isn't it amazing a, that you painted it, and yet you're still finding things? Yeah. <laughs> I um, just find that fascinating. Yeah. So how long did it take you to do this process? This I'm painting. still doing it. Well, this, this painting. Um, this, one, this one took about a year. Um, the second one took two years because that's when I was going through all my stuff and um, so yeah that's that's how he showed me Lehi's dream is it was according to me according to my life and when Nephi saw it it was according to his life and I remember reading in Nephi he had walked and talked with the Lord and then later on he talks about his weaknesses, and I didn't make that correlation for a long time. And I finally realized he's inviting all of us to pray and to see these things. He was inviting his brothers to keep the commandments, to pray to see the things that his father had seen, because he'd seen them. And he was trying to teach them, you know, you have to, you have to act it out. You have to follow that path. Yeah, he asked them, haven't you taken it to the Lord? And they said, no. Yeah. And he was like, well, then that's why you don't understand it. They didn't know. They didn't care about it because they were doing all this over here. So is this your second painting? No, this is the third one. That's the third. Oh, okay. So did you do this one before your mission, or did you do it after your mission? No, this was 2017. Oh, oh. Is when it started. And... <clears throat> I was sitting in church and it was after the BYU-Utah game and everybody was fighting. <laughs> and, uh, I was sitting in church and they are reading the letter from the First Presidency and he said, you need to stop being bullies on social media and start putting your light out there. And when I heard that, that's the first thought of you should paint everything you've seen. Mm -hmm. And... So I, my wife had to set up my Facebook. I didn't. I wasn't on social media at all, and I just. I'm like, I didn't even know how to do this, and so my, I got on Facebook and Instagram, and I just started sharing it. Was that the there. first time you had ever attempted to paint or draw anything, or did you have a no. gift as a little kid? Were you always constantly sketching and drawing stuff, and had that little gift with you your whole life? I, in high school, I had this notebook. I took an art class, 
and I just do all these crazy doodles and somebody stole it. It was full of um, just things I'd drawn and I, I don't know what happened to it. And then on my mission, there was a, a woman that was cleaning her house out and she was getting rid of a bunch of canvases and oil paints. And she said, I'm just going to throw all that out. You guys want it? And the spirit was like, take that. And so I, I'll, I'll take it. And so I took it and I, I went and bought some cards that had these really cool um, paintings on them, just landscapes. And I try to mimic what it had on there. And so that was when I first started oil painting, was on my mission. And I think I did three or four, and I just gave them to people there. Oh, I wish I could find those. <laughs> <laughs> They're in South Carolina somewhere. Um, Malden. Did you sign them? Did you sign them? I did. Uh -huh. wow. Yeah. And I, I didn't take pictures. I, I don't know where they are. I, I have no clue. But. Well, I love, I found this quote the other day, so I don't know if something's kind of coming together for this, but... I just, um, this artist says, making art gives me a place where I can better understand um, an idea, a scripture, a person. Creating sculpture gives me the space to process my thoughts and concerns. When I share my artwork, I feel like I'm sharing a journey, not an answer. Very and that's good. from Libby Davis. So that's Davis. Yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, so, here. and then I got, when I got, um, after I got married, I, Bought a couple canvases and I messed around a little bit, but I'd get halfway done and get frustrated because it didn't look right or something. So I have a ton of half done paintings at my house. Like I just never finished them. So this is your first real serious attempt at like. This is the only. These are the only three paintings I've ever finished. Wow. Well, they're technically they're a work in progress and they probably always will be. There's things I've seen in these that aren't in the painting, just because it would be too cluttered and. Um, the basics are here. Um, all the important things are here. All the things that aren't in the paintings are just for me. So your medium is oil on these? Mm -hmm. I tried acrylic and it dried so fast. I was like, yeah, that's, that's Bob Ross. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, with oils, you can scrape it off and go back. Oh, yeah. And, I've... Yeah. I've let things sit for four hours. I go to one of my kids' dance recitals or something and come back and pick it up, you know, three hours later and it's still like workable. So yeah, I, I had to use oil because it gave me a lot more time to learn how to paint. So you said it's a work in progress and you have other identical paintings that you're working on to put more things into? So I've, I've always thought, because when I painted this, I didn't really know what I was doing. And so when I look at this now, I, and now that I know how to paint a little better, there's a thousand things in here. I, when I saw this, this, what I actually saw was so much cooler than this, but I did my best. Um, and Do you want to walk through the stages that yeah. you have there? This is the first one. So this just kind of shows the, yeah, the, the process. Progression. See, and I, I these didn't make it in the painting either, and I was so mad because they looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I spent so much time on those, like, yeah. hours and hours. Beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's why he wanted me to do this, is because all the things that didn't make it in the painting are here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can and I tell this, a story, though? Yeah. Like, um, I got to go to the BYU film studio where they were doing the Nauvoo paintings for the walls there, the Nauvoo Temple. This was years ago, and some of the artists, they'd get really silly and put, you know, a cigarette in the moose's mouth and <laughs> put, put funny things like, you know, in the, the painting, and the, or they'd have children come and help paint on the bottom, you know, with the oceans and all this, and then they painted over them, but they're still there. I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> they, they just mess around and, you know. That reminds me, I, you guys know Gary Price? Anyone? So I worked for him for two years, sculpting. Um, if you've seen the sculpture in front of the New Skin building, the globe with the kids flying around it. So me and a guy named Dan Hildreth helped him do that point up. So we, we did the kids and um, 
So we'd, we'd try to hide our signatures in the sculpture somewhere and Gary would come back later and I found it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, oh my gosh, working there was so much fun. That was, that was a good time. Um, yeah, Gary, he's a great guy. I love him. Does he live in Springdale? Yeah. Uh, I think he lives in Arizona now. He, he did. That's how I met him is I lived yeah, just did. up the street from him. So are those little, like, dark planets? Or what, what, what yeah, are these are. Oh yeah, there's more of them in this. Yeah. So what does that represent? What is that? I have no. They're. He doesn't know. Um. Okay. I don't know if I'll ever know that here. I don't know. Like, are there like, you know how there's opposition in all things? There's glorified celestialized planets. I wonder if there's wicked planets that are. Just a place to dwell. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Well, a third of the host of heaven mm -hmm. has to go somewhere. Yeah, well, I'm right here by me. <laughs> I know. That's where they are right now. <laughs> that's, that's how this is supposed to work. You guys are sharing things with me, and I'm learning, and you're answering my prayers, and you're bringing things up that I've never thought of. And it's not I'm teaching all of you. It's we're all learning from each other, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm probably learning more today than all of you put together. <laughs> well, it, but it is interesting to think about, because the third part of the hosts of heaven, they're ours. They're ours. Mm -hmm. But what happens to those sons of perdition from other worlds? Yeah. You know, as Robin said, this is a cycle that keeps repeating. Where, where do they go? So Cain, if he remains a son of perdition, and it appears that he might, what happens to him for the eternities? Where does he go? I mean, it, we have no answers to that. Yeah, I would think they go back to into chaos because only light holds you together. But we know he has a body. You have, you have some light in his red. Yeah, have a body. But would it go into chaos again? But I mean, doesn't that mean you lose the body? I don't what's, yeah, holding, what's holding your body together? If you are an eternal being, you cannot be destroyed. Right That's there. The doctrine that I understand is that you're always going to. Look at that, Helena. Okay. Oh, what's so that? I saw this. I was I was asking him how do how do you get on the same playing ground with everyone? And he said, say this, he said, I'm weaker than all of you in some ways, but I'm also stronger than all of you in some ways. Is this the Lord thing? Yeah. Okay. Um you develop a relationship with him and he just talks to you. <laughs> um, so this is a representation of a soul and when we give our light to darkness through our agency it ends there. And there's a oh figure right gosh. here. Whoa. And we actually can become that thing. When we do it enough, we become like that. Mm -hmm. And like we, Vader, right? we infect everyone around us. <laughs> and um, so this is, um, you're, they're takers. They take light. And this is the giving side the Lord gives. He, When we give our light to Him, it goes on for eternity. And everyone that came before us fills it. And... Time is just, it's, when it, when it doesn't matter, it's, things slow way down, and it's like everyone just experiences all of it. And so oh, Christ see. is here. Zoom in a little bit now. Yeah. On the light. Yeah. So that's so the same. So you can kind of see a figure here. There's his heart and his crown. Uh -huh. And then it goes through him, and it goes on for eternity. And this is eternity. I'm singing this to our grandchildren, only because what happens is they get onto media, and they start playing, and it sucks them, and their whole personality mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they became angry and short-tempered, and, and very vindictive kind of uh, uh, personality. And to cut that off and bring them back to the light, when they become a good kid, right? Mm -hmm. that there's a big fight that's going on in them. And the biggest suction I see is this media, these games, all the stuff that's programmed them, from the televisions, that that depicts that to me. That this is interesting. That when, when I see that, I see people marveling. 
we're marveling at all of this technology. And False gods, idols we worship, Isaiah's very clear about them. Yeah. It's a fight, and with your kids. <laughs> I get home and my kids are all I'm like, hey, let's talk. <laughs> you know, let's live the life that's in front of you. Well, that other side is like a big energy vampire just feeding off of you or trying mm-hmm. to, right? It's like a, like a, like a symbiote. But you're, you're giving yourself. Through your choices, you're feeding He doesn't, he, it. he takes it in a way, but we, um, if oh, someone's wow. controlling you or abusing you, they're taking from you. And they're taking your agency, they're taking your ability to prove yourself through manipulation or whatever they're doing. And it's you taking your agency back from them. That's what you're learning. So if someone's causing you pain and suffering, there's another way to look at it. We're learning how to love our enemies. (laughs) And without letting them have your energy. (laughs) Yeah. So there has to be a barrier, right? You can still love them, but without taking their energy Mm -hmm. of your light. So when we're trying to control our kids, um, we're actually pushing them away. It's so hard for me (laughs) with my own kids, and I I didn't think it would be, but it's I've kind of grown into it, and it's more it feels way more natural. I just I don't, I'm very aware of my ripple effect with my kids because I don't want to affect them in a way, even through manipulation, I've had to catch myself, but it's a feeling, it's like, nope, don't even, don't even go there, and it's, it's hard, you guys all know, yeah, even, do. Um, and we, we're all going through this, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, um, when every you put day. This spiritual awareness mm-hmm. into every decision, right, then it, really changes it. A lot of times we're just unconsciously reacting to it. Yeah. Yeah. We like being numb. Like dealing with hard things, it's hard. You know, it's painful sometimes, but when you work through them and and actually, you know, truly forgive that person, you can't just say, oh, I forgive you. You know, I tried that and he said, that's not how it works. You have to go, you have to go through all that. You have to work it out. And, and you know, they... They caused you all this pain and suffering, and I think they're gonna see that someday. So do you kind of do your artwork, and that's how you feel? Absolutely. This is my spiritual gift, and we all have one or two or ten. I don't know. So is this another painting you're working on? It's not one of these two, right? Yeah. This is. This is. Um, I had a question, how, how does this, what does this look like? You know, this is what it's all about. And we'll always be in this position mm-hmm. until we are like Christ. Right. Or the other guy. <laughs> Whoever wins over. <laughs> that, like that um, saying of the Native American that told his grandson, there's two... Beings, wolves, two wolves, wolves inside yeah. you. One is the good wolf, and the other is the bad wolf. And he asks, "Who's? Wh- how do you know which one wins?" And he says, "Whichever one you're feeding." <laughs> right? Yeah. That sounds about right. And that looks like he's being fed there. <laughs> There's another figure hiding in here too. Oh yeah. Um, if you go down a little bit more. Go down. And I didn't even see it for a long time. I was the other down. The other way. The other way. The opposite way. The other down. Oh yeah, yeah you, you can see it. You can see it now. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. I can't see it. And that freaked me out. Where? Um, I don't see it. Oh yeah. Right there. Okay, so that's Christ on the left. His eye is right here. His other eye is here. His nose is here. Oh. It's um, it's kind of hard to oh, see, yeah. but um, it it's symbolic because you can see this one very clearly, but you can't really see this one. Is it, he in the dark? Oh. Yeah, he's on the dark side. Oh, okay. it's spooky looking when you see it. Yeah, that's the his spooky. nose is here, his mouth yeah. is kind of down here, his eyes are here, yeah. his forehead. Yeah. Um, this is one of his nostrils right here. His eyes, other eye, mouth down here. But that was, um, he's sneaky. 
the most it's subtle oh, of so all. It's a yeah. side, it's a side view, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. No, so I wasn't no. seeing before. I think I see no, two eyes. Long. You can see two eyes. It's it's full on. It's yeah, like don't. it's like looking on the left mm -hmm. side of his face. Oh, it's straight up and down. Once you see the hidden yeah. things, that's all you see. Yeah. Like when people finally see it, like, oh my gosh. And, and then... Um, you want to go to the second painting? Yeah, yeah, I think we've covered most everything in this yeah. one. Yeah. Can I speak to that really quick, yeah. what that means to me? It's so beautiful because it's obvious that the dark and the light. You can see the darkness, you can see the light. Mm -hmm. So discerning the voice that's speaking to you as you're ascending, then progressing through this life and overcoming the natural man, then that determination between dark and light is more subtle, so the, the, the discerning is refined. So you can see the image with, when it doesn't look like there's an image. You can hear the voice that's actually the deception in the subtlety because you're, you're attuning your discerning abilities to the light. Mm -hmm. So you can see it, like you just said, you can see it so easily. Once you know it's there, you're like, oh, yeah, I can see it. I can discern even the subtlety of the difference of dark and light. Yeah. So, is there anyone that can't see that face in the middle? Well, I just yeah. want to know: Did you intend on painting that, or no. did you realize it later? This I real I saw it later. <laughs> I I did this intentionally, and I, and how cool is that that I didn't see it? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't when I paint something and it's hidden, I don't see it right away, ever. That and looks I'll, like a big crook nose right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, his and nose is here. Kind of a side view. Yeah. Oh, I see it now. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it's oh, kind of yeah. spooky. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. It's bigger than the other guy. Yeah, it's large. It's, it's like really he's large. He's just turning and he's looking like this. Yes. And you know what's so interesting is you have it coming up of the crown chakra, <laughs> <laughs> which is interesting. Where you would need to yeah. discern at the is highest level. Is that the alter ego? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that see, is. Yeah, that's, that's like other things I just I don't know about, but I'm learning when I talk to people that are teaching me all, you know, the truth that's in them, and we're sharing all these things, and I think that's what the purpose... His face is turned from the light, too, which is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. But his one eye is focused on the light. Like, yeah. he's, yeah. he's like lording over this it's one, like too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's very fascinating. Okay, how are we on time? I'm... It's, uh, you got 45 minutes left. Okay. <laughs> I have one more question. Okay. So you talked about forgiveness could you share maybe in your picture where you were drawing that and your experience with that when forgiveness you, when you were talking about how when you, you have to forgive someone and you work through that through your art and i was wondering if you could if you had an example in your art you could talk about that experience. so i not that it's in the art, but it's in me, and it came out in, in my art. A lot of these th really passionate things that happened in my life, my low points, my lowest points, and my highest points are all, you know, those were necessary so that when people look at these, they feel it. And that's how, that's how um, much passion can be inside of you when you're doing something like this, when you're you know, sharing your gift with others and learning and growing all the time and, you know, having a deep focus on what the Lord wants you to do because everyone can help at least one person and we're going to affect at least one person. And how are we affecting that person? Mm -hmm. And um, so I do construction and you all know that never goes right. Um, <laughs> I get fights, I, I disagree, I, there's money issues, um, so I, I've had a few um, experiences in construction where people are my enemy and um, I had, um, <laughs> kind of, I, I don't want to bring up names, um, but the, the situation was, we just disagreed on some things, and I thought I was right, and he thought he was right, and so we just, um, I was really close to this guy, and I still am today, um, and he taught me a lot, and I, I just, 
I wanted to leave things peaceful. I don't ever like burning bridges, so I gave up some things, and so did he. And I left, and about six months after that, I was driving past their house, and I had this prompting to go apologize again. And I drove all the way home with this prompting just getting stronger and stronger. And I, I turned around and I went all the way back to Mapleton from Provo. And I knocked on his door and when he opened his door and saw me, he was like, <laughs> what are you doing here? And I just said, I, I came here to apologize and if there's anything I did, I'm sorry. I, I know I make mistakes and we just sat on his porch and had this um, spiritual conversation and now when I see him I shake his hand and we talk and it's there's no hard feelings but that was so hard for me to do and the whole time I was driving back to Maples and I just like I was fighting it and I'm just I can't do this <laughs> I didn't do anything wrong you know but I did there's always something that we're if we're in a situation we're part of it and whether it's unfair or fair, we can still choose to not let, let that affect us in a dark way. And aren't you so happy after you did that? Absolutely. You the whole drive home, I was just down. tears all down my right. face the whole time. Like, that was so cool. <laughs> and I was so glad I went back. You listen to the and, spirit. <laughs> yeah. When you listen to the spirit, it always ends really cool. Yeah. And that's what makes you want more is you just you feed off of that. And I love doing this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, get to the second picture. We want to oh, see yeah. the second. <laughs> so did you have any experiences <laughs> with your fireside that, 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 that were interesting that about this? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> He's had a fireside recently, and he was saying last night that he had some additional <laughs> insights from people. We might have to do another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So are you making prints of these and selling them? That's why I told yeah. him. had a bunch. I told him to bring them, but then he sold them all. <laughs> yeah, they, I, they didn't last. Um, well, you so I have more, a, right? Yeah. He can take orders for them. Okay, good. Okay. We'll do um, that. So, and you can get whatever size you want. This is the actual yeah. original size of this painting. I should have brought the original, but I, I'm scared something's going to happen. Um, Let's say okay. where it started. Is this where it started? Yeah, this was the beginning. And mm. when I was done with the first painting, I I was so relieved. And I didn't want to do any more. I'm like, I, I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this was, just, That's how life this is. was me like, fine. And I just, I just started it. And then, you know what it reminds me yeah. of? The, the waters that separated yeah. in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I see that in the... Okay, so I was laying in bed at, on a Sunday morning, and I, I had this, um, I saw this, and this is the path of repentance right here. Mm -hmm. And I woke up, and I got dressed as fast as I could and ran downstairs and I painted this part right here. Been there many times. The dark Spend a lot of time over here. Um, is and then just some highlights. This is the where the river is here. The river of filthy water. Yeah. I don't know, can you see both of these at the same <laughs> time? Back and forth, so it's okay, cool. Um, okay, go to the next one. Do you work with mud? With mud? Yeah, concrete. I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. I do all of it. I've done <laughs> plumbing, electrical, concrete, paint. Also, so cool is he? He's in the physical construction of in life, and then the contrast of the spiritual so construction yeah. and yeah. that bridge. Oh, I got really to beautiful. I got to work on the Nauvoo Temple. Wow. Doing the stairs. Wow. Mm. Very. That was cool. That was way <laughs> cool. <laughs> Okay. So this is the building. This is something else I got wrong. I just started throwing things in. Um, so that's kind of cool to see that. This is... Um, was, Were you thinking of the great and spacious building? Yeah. Like I... 
Well, you obviously you can see how it turned out, but right. mm -hmm. this whole section is gone. That one too. It's um, and that's kind of what did you get wrong? Just how 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 it looks all together. So this is really cool. So this can represent all of us in, as individuals. So the back here, there's kind of the old style building, like when the earth first started. Um, oh, the Tower then, of Babel kind of a thing. And that represents that this building's always been here. And on the front, there's a mirage of different time periods on the earth. Like there's a skyscraper, you know, kind of old, old style. And in the back, it's deteriorating. And there's actually a, a bean right here. There's his neckline, his shoulders. Uh -huh. And he's looking up like he's just in pain. And I didn't even know that was in there. I saw it later. Um, but there's, it looks like it's in, on fire inside. There's, um, but, and I think that's kind of the time period we're in now. This building's crumbling. And this is the den of iniquity. And mm -hmm. when I painted this, I, I got home from work and I saw it. And it, it took about a half an hour. Um, and I took a picture of it and I was up laying in bed and I couldn't sleep. So I just pulled it out and I was looking at it. And there are um, people like this re kind of represents addiction and, you know, things we get into here that cause us um, destruction in our lives and there's like people down in just drinking it in like they're mm -hmm. his butts up in the air right here and he's just there's a few people right here that are like they're just down in it and then there's a person here trying to get out and then like Satan, wrestling with Satan's, the pigs. Satan's <laughs> um, at the trough of I don't know, it's kind of Can you see it from this guns. area? Yeah, so yeah. if you zoom in, a little zoom in right here. So who's trying to get out? Show me where that one is. Right, right here. So here's his head uh -huh. and his arms right here. He's oh, like okay. he's, he's like trying to, trying to out. Right. Yeah, and this guy's just on his so stomach and he's just yeah. Uh -huh. uh huh. And there's three men right here just like conjuring up lies and deceptions. Mm. Right here, one, two, Sorry. three. And then there's uh, figures over here that are just bowing down to it. And there's figures lying down, like that represents spiritual death. They just go and they lay down. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. And there's, um, if you go right here, there's a figure laying right here, and there's a, their head is right here, and it's like there's a block of concrete around it or something, like weighing their head down. Hmm. This is the filthy water. And the ones standing up are probably the leaders. And them to drink. I didn't see this till later too, but Satan's just sitting here watching all of it. His this light right here is his 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 arm. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's sitting like this, just watching it. Mm -hmm. So here's his nice here's his head right here. Yeah. There's his fist under his chin. Oh, his yeah. arm comes down, there's his shoulder. He's like four Kind of Can you see him? Can you get closer, Nancy, or is that as big oh as it'll goodness. stretch out? Can you make it any larger, Nancy? Yeah, he's one hand. That's sort of. I know. That's as like a dark Okay, that's, that's as far out. Yeah. Okay. And that water looks like all misty there, like it's like. Okay, so this is really cool. So. It's enticing to some. <laughs> this is this, oh, like you're looking down in it. So this represents the world, and I had a, I put this on, when I finished it, I put it on a Facebook group called Hear Him, and there was another artist that he said, how did you paint that? I'm like, what do you mean? He said, it looks like you could fall down in it, or you're down in it, and you have to climb out. I'm like, I had never seen yeah. that. I'm like, wow, that, so I, I, when I look at that now, that's what I see. It's like, am I down in the hole and need to climb out, or am I like, hey, what's that? You know, it's. You know, I've seen a, an image where it's kind of like a, a labyrinth, yeah. but it's under the tree of life. Like you have to go through the labyrinth of it all to finally get to some of that light and try and go up it. I don't know. 
And, this and it be, seems oh, to be this light. Could this be a woman looking sideways with hair coming down? Probably. Like an enticement? <laughs> Pe people see them, the their own things yeah. in them. Yeah, that doesn't have like a face in there. But I well, I see a laughing. See features. his pointed nose and the eye, <laughs> and his mouth is laughing right yeah. on the on the, the lighter. It's a dark. No. Yeah. So when I right when here, I, there's his teeth and his eye and the nose and his chin. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Like a face yeah. gobbling up the light. Oh, yeah. So yeah. This, this represents the world, and when I painted this, I just went. Mm. I'm like, what? I don't know why I did that. I just. But so in the last days, there will be a, a remnant. The Lord's oh. people that will leave the world and come out of it. And it doesn't show it here, but in the painting there's a woman lying on her side right here. Like she's... In Revelations it talks about the, the woman, the church is a woman. Right. And there's a... When I painted this right here, I just... I wanted to paint something like that showed... Um, a ball of light and then something traveling to another ball of light and I just I saw this stain in my mind and I was trying to paint it and I saw later there's a dragon in here there's his head and his wing it's like he's falling oh, okay. and oh. it's like this light is piercing through his heart and he's he's falling um, but yeah this represents the remnant that will come out of the world and the woman is lying here like she's just exhausted, waiting, hoping for the Lord to come back. And the dragon has lost and he's falling. And this is the star of um, Christ's birth. Uh, it's very significant. This is, um, represents light and darkness that they'll always be fighting. It almost looks like a dragon's taking right. a bite out of it here, it and the does. light's just... When when someone takes a bite of the light, it goes into them, and, and it's like it just... So I like on the right picture where you show the den of iniquities and everything, and then you have the path of repentance coming from that den of mm -hmm. iniquities all of them coming back. Yeah, the door's the here. So you got to come through here, out the door, and, and around... And that's and then when you come up that path, that's where you grab hold of the, the rod. iron rod. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when I was painting this step right here, it doesn't quite look right, and I think it's because this dies down and this is here and there. So I was flip flopping the shadow and the highlight back and forth. I'm like, oh, that just no matter what I do, it doesn't look right, and. I got it to where it is now, and I went. I was. I had to go do something, and I thought, well, I'll come back and fix it later, and I just never did. And when I came back to fix it, he said, just leave it. You know what it was like to me, that step? Something <laughs> that you walk? It looks to me like you have to take that leap of faith to get over it. Yes. Um, so I saw myself yeah. sitting here in a chair, and this this represents giving your whole heart to him. And what was keeping me from doing that is my fear of when we read the scriptures, what happens to people that follow Christ? They get persecuted. Persecuted, yeah. yeah. For his sake. You're, you're fighting and standing up for the truth. You're trying to live it. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting in this chair and I saw myself just sitting there. And I'm like, why are you just sitting there? <laughs> And I, I finally, um, I knelt down to pray one day, and he, he showed me really quickly what that meant. And I stood right back up, and I said, nope, I'm not ready for that. And for about a year, a year went by, and it was the lowest point of my life. Everything was wrong. And I was so mad at him because I thought, if I follow you and do these things, I thought things were supposed to be great. You'll be glad. <laughs> <laughs> things were great, but when I go through something hard and it was impossible, and I'm, I'm just, I can't do this anymore. Um, so I was there. <laughs> it's like he almost, every weight that was on me in my life was either 
something I did to break a commandment or something someone else did breaking a commandment. And we're the ones that mess things up. God doesn't mess anything up. He's here to help us. And that's it. Um, TJ? So yeah. you got out of the chair and left forward? Yes, so I, I was in that moment and I thought, I can't even imagine things getting worse. Okay. I, and in that moment, I stood up out of that chair and I took that step. And the chain represents us shedding that fear and shedding our weaknesses and overcoming Breaking the them. chains of, of addiction. What's holding you back from progression? Mm -hmm. Holding you back. What's, this, what's the bright light on the red rock? <laughs> this? Yeah. yeah. So in the first painting, it's a the stone. Um, in this painting, that's the stone. And it's suspended there because like, we're kind of suspended here in our choices and we're deciding everything we do um, is either moving us towards him or the other way. And I didn't know what that was for a long time. I was telling people it's the light of redemption or it's that I had an experience where this is me right here trying to get out and I I had a dream where I was I was just swimming in this and I was trying to get out and I, I put my arm up like it is there and I remember seeing this from here. And I just the feeling of I'm so glad that's there. I always know that's there. And you can see this from anywhere in the painting. If you're here you can see it. If you're here you can see it. Just that reminder, you know, when we're in our lowest points and we're just, we want to give up, so we start a, looking for that. There's a lightning bolt coming down in the background in the pink clouds, is that like... It's just scary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the storm's coming. Yeah. Not a storm, okay. Yeah. And these, I had a woman ask me at the fireside what these were and I, I just, I don't know. I was using them to create some depth. Uh -huh. So before I painted these, it kind of um, it didn't look as far away. But when I put those in, it, it made the tree actually look like it was bigger and further away. They kind of look like, like a church or a temple, but maybe the temple of, of Satan or oh. something. So later I saw there's a, there's a figure in here, a cloaked figure. His, it's like his arm yeah. is right here, um, and his sleeve comes down, and then his his other arm is like this, like he's saying, "Hey, come this way." Right. You know, this is a yeah. This is a really bad place. Oh, a canyon. It can be the great and abominable church. And, yes. You know. Yeah. Well, remember, there's well for the very elect that have gotten along there and are approaching the tree. There's all the sentinels of evil trying mm -hmm. to. So hear this them. is cool. Go up just a teeny bit more. So I was painting the rod of iron, and it, I I started doing a straight line from here to here because the rod of iron straight, yeah. and it looked like a Harry Potter wand just floating in the air, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like that looks funny. So I I must have done this probably 12 angles starting straight coming this way and when I got to here it was like oh that just that looks perfect and I don't know why that happened but this path right here is um, the path of Christ of course the rod of iron that represents the word of God that's us learning about him and the white fire represents um, that we're serious about learning from him that we're he knows when we're when we give our heart to him, we can't fake that. Mm -hmm. And so the the when I saw the white fire coming out of it, that represents that we're actually grabbing onto it to learn from him instead of just faking it or going through the motions. And there's a <laughs> I was trying to make it look like there was fire coming out of it in different places along the rod. So I painted this and if you see there's a, a, a face there's a right face. there. Yes, I can see it. And then there's a, hand, there's a hand right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. look and at he's, that. He's standing like this. 
Yes. I was just going to say, one of the things I love is, you know, you say you've only finished three paintings, but They're like these, these paintings, paintings are like lights. <laughs> like, like, you don't, we come to this life and we discover things. We, do, we make lots of mistakes. We have to change them. We, we're not just looking at the final masterpiece. And you're literally being taught gospel principles through these paintings, but higher things. So it's as much for you, but it's also for all of us. Yeah, it's just amazing how God's using this. To oh. I I love this that it that the word is God. The word is Christ Himself. Like and come, in, come return to me, return yes. to me, return to me, and that you know it's a person. That's it. Look, it, people think it's a rod that you hold on to, but you're really holding on to Him. So I I had seen the hand, and I was putting that there purposefully, so that the hand of God. But this was. I didn't do this. Yeah. That just happened. It looks like robes coming down. Yeah, like he's there. got a... So this isn't how it ended up. When I saw the face in it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to make that look more like... So, yeah, I mean, this is how it ended up looking. Can, Can I, I share something? Who's the old girl I... under the... over there? Because mm -hmm. that's not the tree of life. What is that? Oh, so... Oh, so Rob this needs is, this. She wants to just, say just one thing. We went down. A lot of you guys went down and went to the panel along, you know, with was carved on the walls. Yeah. And that a heroin or it, no? It's kind of down that way. Ten but, miles something canyon. Yeah. Something. So we went down, but on Nine it miles. it showed that there was a, like a tree of the two different directions, and then the root came down, and that's where the rod, like of this existence, to follow it. If you followed it. You, you kind of followed around the crags, and the rock literally was on a rock, and you had to go around the crags on the rock. And then you passed people that were saying, come here, come here. I mean, this was a petroglyph. Oh. And then it showed that it went below the tree of life, but then it went through the body of a man. It looked like Christ. Mm -hmm. And then, then it had balls of fire on the other hand. So you went through the one hand, Go through the body of the Christ, and the trail then continued winding up to the tree that was up on the hill. Wow. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, it's almost like this path, you have to follow light, right? You pass through the false doctrine that would like to lure you into false canyons. Going through the body of Christ, literally, I counted your layers up like on a cake, right? It's like you're going up the mountain, and there's the seven layers. You're getting up to that tree of life, but in the in the one on the canyon wall, the tree had human feet, and so it really looked like that a, a heavenly right. mother or aspect of this conduit that you can go through the heavens. There's a light that goes through that to go up to the celestial spheres. Like you don't really get to experience on this earth, but that to me was very much like the literally a petroglyph from hundreds of years ago on a wall. Mm -hmm. So, pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, this is doctrinal too in the Jacob's Ladder. And right. Well, yeah, it's the same. Ascending. Everybody's yeah. used okay. these different images, but I'm like, that is so powerful that it's the hand and the face. So tell us about Beautiful. this side over here. The woman. Yeah, this side. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the fountain of living water is coming from the tree. Mm -hmm. And who's the young girl? Is this someone who is tasted and drinking from them? Or? Okay, so I have to tell you this. For, is there, there's another one. Can you go back to all of them? Or wait, go. Let's see. I'll keep going. No water no, there. The no water there. Wow, that really evolved. Let's keep going. Keep going. That one. Okay. Whoa, you have changed this so many times. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Oh. Mm. Interesting. And it's right by that good water. So it represents our time here. Um, like each piece of fruit would maybe be a represent an experience we went through and overcame here, or um, it's just symbolic of us. We can always partake of that, like when you think back to your wedding day or a great moment or maybe a scary moment or, you know, anything that's, that affects us in a great way. Childbirth. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> something that um, impacted our lives and that we grew from, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what he wanted when she partook of that fruit is 
what we're ha what we're doing here now. We're learning, we're growing, we're ascending and descending. But I took the um this was my idea of how it looked. Um and I don't know why I changed it, but it didn't I when I painted this this is so weird. I I painted the fruit in there and about a month later I was painting something else and my pinky hit one of the pieces of fruit and it was still wet after a month. Wow. And he said, wipe it off. And I, what? It's still wet. <laughs> so I just wiped all the fruit off and I still don't know why. Um, because it looks like the, it, the, tr the fruit, the pure light fruit is on the other tree. Yeah, and I, I, um, I'm glad I took a picture of this though, because yeah. um, it did have fruit. Um, Interesting. And Brittany, the, the girl that modeled for Eve, she, her son um, was seeing spirits and, and he referred to them as a like a, a pumpkin light or something. And so when I, when she told me that, I was like, man, those look like little lit up pumpkins on there. And so I made a print of that and gave it to him mm -hmm. and told him to always remember his gift of seeing spirits. So There's, this one right here? Yeah. There's another scripture that is really powerful and it's in, it's in Proverbs and she's calling it the gate of the temple but it says don't don't go to the stranger right it's another woman but she's a stranger she's she's not on that same path so she will lead you it looks like to a garden but it's the wrong garden she's not she's not of the fruit of the tree of life so those that are seeking the higher knowledge there's there's good you can have good or you can have really good mm -hmm. and so the I'm just seeing it because I'm doing so much stuff with women, but there's definitely the Lord presents both. And, and the one looks good. And, and a lot of times in marriage, right, the guy's thinking, well, this wife, my normal married wife in my life is hard. And this other looks so delicious. It's, it's mm -hmm. a very, del it's an easier lower path, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice, yeah, it has lots of promise there. So I'm glad he took the fruit off. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, but see, Christ with the parable of the fig tree, I mean, the interesting thing is it looked so perfect, but then the fruits no weren't fruit. bearing. Right. Like, the tree was beautiful, but it wasn't it didn't bearing bear fruit. the fruit of the purpose of and life. The correct fruit. Uh, yeah. yeah, the way you really want. Yeah. So many, so there's so many ways to get off on this path, right? I mean, there's more ways to get off than there are ways to stay on. So, so what's the rest of where the girl is in that little, like... Okay, so uh, this, this is, this is uh, a dream I had, and it was... And I'm not sure when it, when it happened, because there's elements of it that are from my past, and there's also elements of it in, that are in the future. But it felt like home, like we go through something and then we go home, and we go through something and we go home. And it was, and that's how I, the only way I could wrap my head around it was because there's an element of um, I've been here before. And I'm gonna be there again. And so this was, um, I was learning how to organize things and everything in this space was, I could feel it like I was part of it. I could feel the water moving, feel the, um, I was building a, a temple for my house and I organized the seeds to plant the trees and the trees grew and they knew they're going to be part of my home. And wow. you can feel, I've had people ask me about reincarnation and so there's no reason for it. You feel everything and everything fills you. And it's just this understanding of they love being what they are and they chose that thing and they can fill us and they can feel the love we have for them because they're necessary for us to have this experience. And they choose what Everything chooses its own what it is. But it's all gonna cut. Yeah.
And so I was being tutored in how to do this. And it, every, I could, it was the space of the area was what my capacity could, could handle at the moment. Wow. And so I had, I stopped and I was just enjoying the sunset and my daughter came up over the hill and she had organized and created and picked the colors of this butterfly and like they did it together and it would fly away and she every time she put her finger up it'd come land on her finger and she'd whisper to it and like she was just playing with it and she just made her way up to me and I was just enjoying watching her do this and she came up and she said dad look I made this butterfly for you in case you're ever sad or lonely and then that was the end of the dream and when I was night when I was getting ready to go on my mission I had a lot to repent of and I was trying to make amends with people I'd stolen from and hurt and doing all of that and I was getting close to where I I had got my call and I was in my backyard and I said I can't I can't go on a mission until I know that you've forgiven me for all this stuff and I just fell asleep and then when I woke up there was this monarch butterfly on my chest oh my and it was just sitting there looking at me just opening and closing its wings and I just had this overwhelming feeling that I had been forgiven of all this stuff and so that's how it's in the past and the future it's just I don't so it, it feels more like it's our it's our learning space right that's our <clears throat> our experiential or this is our learning experience and when we're this is our home refined <laughs> this is our home um, space I had the feeling that that is the during the millennium oh that's beautiful mm -hmm. we're gonna be healing and learning and we're gonna be healing a lot Oh, I like that a lot better. <laughs> That's much better. Because <laughs> it's so beautiful, but I'm like, well, the living waters are there. You have to get to it. Yeah, when you, when you, you die, there? it it isn't just automatically, oh, everything's great. You still have to go through everything you did. And imagine not having your body when you're trying to do that. Right. That's amazing. I have a question. So, you know, in genealogy, they teach you, and you do your genealogy, and... As you do it, your ancestors is heal as well, and that there's some healing. Have you had any experiences with your art where you have felt that ancestral thing mm -hmm. going on? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's in the fourth painting, though. So you're working guess on I another can, one. I guess I can share that with you. Um, if I can. <laughs> well, it's good to eat. Yeah, we want to see Eve. What? <laughs> um, I know. Yeah. So, so what he showed me is there's an archway, and it's it's where you walk through to come to Earth, and Eve was standing at the head of it, and Adam, and everything, and I saw people walking through their ancestors. Um, all the way to Eve and when you'd walk pass through that person you'd spend time with them like you could spend as much time as you wanted with them and they would teach you and um, things that they had learned and you could stay there as long as you wanted or you could pass right through them but you pick up traits from every single one and DNC 123 and so, but Eve is standing, Adam and Eve are at the head of that. And even Christ and Mary and everyone, they all go through Adam and Eve mm -hmm. around the earth. Mm. And so, yeah, that, that's, um, I'm very interested in that now. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so this, um, right here. So these are... When you, when you see pictures of space, you see things like this, and that's just intelligence and 
things that are out there that have always been there. Um, so before I painted this, I was like, what goes here? You know, I don't, sometimes he'll, I'll just paint things that, and I, it kind of happens in that moment. And he said that you need to put something there that represents the beginning of life. And then he leaves. <laughs> like, okay. So I have to figure it out. Well, I see a boy. I see a boy. Yeah, his so, arm, the side of his profile of his face. So I just sat in my chair and I... I and a mother what, uh, next to him. Yeah, there's, uh, there's hidden things in this. So mm -hmm. um, I was trying to... I'm like, is it something like this? Or, you know, something like this? The beginning of life. I had to like... And I read the scriptures and I was trying to figure it out. And... When I finally painted it, I, I just, I got, and this was weird because I usually, I get the dark colors first and I, I, I paint this, the basic shape of it. And then I come back later and add the highlights and the light parts. But I start, I just put yellow and white on my palette and I'm like, is this right? <laughs> yeah. So I started in the middle. I was just trying to like paint something like this, or I just I don't know. I just started. Sometimes he says just start, and this thing happens. And so I I painted it how it is, and I was sitting in my chair looking at it. I'm like that's all wrong. That that's stupid. That's nothing. There's nothing even there. And I and when I when I would paint, I'd paint on top of the paint that was there. Like he said, paint the furthest thing away, and then move towards you. And so it's just everything stacked on top of each other. That's what gives it that look like you can walk into it. And so I was sitting there looking at it, and I, I, I looked over on the dark side over here, and when I look back, there's a man right here. Mm -hmm. Here's his head, mm -hmm. his shoulder. Yep, yeah, and his arm. And the I woman, so he's hugging her from behind. Like, this is her hair. Her shoulder's here. Mm -hmm. And then there's a child right here. Mm -hmm. There's his head, mm -hmm. and the the mother and the child are actually their heads are touching, right here. And then they're all facing the light in the middle. There's and a woman so, behind him too. Yeah. Can you see her? There's yeah. Oh, there's okay. things. <laughs> oh, there's things. Oh, oh yeah. And there's and there's a mother elephant right here, and a baby elephant, and they're touching. Oh trunks. yeah. Oh my goodness. There's a child right here, like a, in the womb. There's a fetus right here, and then a like a after it's more formed, there's you can see the face. Oh, yeah. pull it down a little bit, Mike, so we can see the. No, no, no. Right. I think that's the. No, it's it's kind of on its way out. It's oh, okay. Right here, see the child right here. Oh, okay. And the fetus. Um, oh, I see it. Yeah. And there's the. So they're all facing the light in the middle. So the mm -hmm. man, the woman, and the child. And I believe this is Christ. And they're all awesome. facing the light in the middle. The light of truth. Okay, so... Um, when I painted the Milky Way... Wow, it was, it yeah, was, zoom in, Mike, um, on the Milky Way there. I was going through a rough spot when I painted this. If you can go to the, let's see, go back. There's, it's the first time. No. Hmm. Okay, this, I, I kind of highlighted it later after I saw these things. But there's a lion right here. Here's his eye. His nose comes down there and his snout. So the bottom of his eye is right here. There's his eye. And his nose comes, there's his nose right here in his mouth. Maybe zoom in a little more. No, back out. You might be able to see it here a little better. So he's, here's his eye. His yeah. nose comes, it's kind of a profile side view. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, so the lion is also, there, the father is right here. Here's his nose, his eye right here, his cheek. So the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. So when I, when I, I was trying to paint the Milky Way, 
And I'm like, ah, it just looks dumb. It doesn't look right. And so I, I had, I was in my mind, I was like, I have to change it. I have to make it look right. And every time I'd go down to something would come up and I'm like, ah, and I, I'd have to leave. And one day I went down and I actually mixed the paint colors all together because I was going to fix it. And it was like he was standing between me and the painting and it was like he just pushed me away. <laughs> That's cool. He said, don't touch it. And that made, I got upset. I'm like, you don't want me to paint. So I threw my palette down and I actually put a sheet over the painting and I didn't work on it for four months. <laughs> and that, I was just pouting. <laughs> I I saw myself like when you see a kid in Walmart who doesn't get a candy bar or something, he's just screaming on the floor. <laughs> um, so I later I when I started looking in here because I was just in a, in a really bad place, and whenever I do that, that's when the good starts. I start. I could have I could have done more in the situation to help. I was lazy. I was you know. Think the things you don't want to admit. Um, and that's when I saw the lion. When I, I was like, I'm, I was apologizing to him and making up. Um, and so I pulled my phone out and I was just looking at the painting. And that's when I saw all this. Is when I started repenting. And so I saw the lion. And then the, if you don't see it, don't feel bad. Um, anyone see it? Yeah. I have a hard time. I had a hard time seeing My mom it. still can't see it. Like she, <laughs> Whenever she comes over, I'm like, okay, he's right here. <laughs> but once you see it, that's all you see. It's, um, but I can tell you the meaning of everything. So there's, the father is also a lion, and there's a hint of a woman right here. There's her nose, her cheekbone. And it's like her mouth is open. There's her top lip, and her oh, bottom lip comes that. down yeah. there. And there's a rib connecting them. And the sun is in the middle, and there's a crown that's over all three of them. That's how they're one. And then the Holy Ghost is here, and he's also, it looks like the Book of Life opened up. The seam is right down the middle, and the book is open. And here's his eye, and his nose, and his mouth would be down here. It's like there's just little, almost like abstract, um, kind of hidden. But they're always watching over us. And when I, when I saw the lion, I don't know, the lion's significant. Um, the lion, the male lion keeps balance. Like, he'll even kill some of the cubs if they're getting at, you know, making uh, waves in the balance of things. Like he did with Satan. Right. Um, and then, you know, it's interesting. You might be able to see that best when you're right here in this lowest place where the chain has broken. This bottom corner. Oh, yeah. Your perspective would be right to them. Yeah, and it's like he's looking over at this area, like I'm watching you, and he's protecting us like a lion. He's very protective of us. Um, and so I, I don't know. I just I think that it, that's very significant that the he's all of those things in one. And then there's the law, the Ten Commandments here. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if you look, there's a child hiding. Like oh, they're crouched hiding. down. Yeah. The, dark. Um, the head's here, and it's like they're looking down at the tree of life. The eyes, that little star right there. The knee is right here. Like their back comes down to their yeah. bum. Mm -hmm. Their leg. Oh, yeah. And the Holy Ghost. It goes into the head of the child hiding. Like he's protecting us. When something traumatic happens when we're a child, we forget it sometimes if it's traumatic enough. Wow. Went to the screen. Didn't see oh, this is a different one, right? Did you have the final one? Which one is this? It's the final one. Let's see. If you go. Oh, maybe, maybe he has the final know. one on there. I don't think it's. I, I, it I it would be it down some. further. Oh, this is the final one right here. Yeah. But, yeah. Let's see. Because the earth is the thing I'm seeing different at the yeah. top. Yeah, so um, this right here, this represents the, the very first creation. Oh, 
Um, I don't know much about that right now. Um, just that this is the first earth being created. Um, I believe this is um, Kola or something to do with that. Is that the one behind you? This here? And, oh, yeah, this here. And that's. Um, and when I'm painting this, I'm just like, oh, it's so cool. And later I see all these hidden things, and then as I'm looking at them, he'll teach me what they are. Mm. And so we'll never stop learning. And it's once I, I figure out kind of what it is, then he'll add to it as I ponder it and think about it. And, and sometimes I'll just sit down in my basement and look at him, and he'll teach me things in greater depth. So beautiful. Well, so in front of the little girl with the butterfly, down at the very front of the living water is right there by her feet. There's a bunch of, is those lily pads? Or are they stones? stones? Are they? These? Yeah. Yeah, they're stones in the water. Okay. So who's the girl? Is that? Eve? That's my daughter. In the dream, she had yeah, the, the she made the butterfly yeah. and she was, Maybe so for you. the reason she's standing here is because I have not gone through here yet. She's there to remind me. Um, this is where you need This to is go. where you want to go. It's almost like you have the lighted stones on the ground, like these are uh, fireflies. Oh, leading away. And this is the gateway um, to the millennial reign. Yeah, the um, terrestrial world. It's beautiful. That is gorgeous. You have a palm tree in there. Yeah, I... palm trees are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Where's it? Oh, over there. Oh, I yeah, see on the water. The well, floor. it's like you, you, you can decide where what is in your space. You know, it was whatever you can imagine. Mm. Was that a palmetto from South Carolina? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, I think we covered all this. Should we do Eve? Oh, yeah. we do Eve. Oh, there's a dragon right here. In the darkness. Oh, you see. So, I, I'd come downstairs to paint. Right oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I'd come downstairs to paint, and it's like I, I started seeing a dragon in there. And I'm like, I'm not putting a dragon in the painting. And... I was picturing like um, Elliot's dragon or something. Uh -huh. and just, <laughs> <laughs> like, and I finally, and he, he said, well, there's a dragon in the painting. And I'm like, okay, well, it has to look, I'm going to hide it. Like, I, I don't want people, it to stand out. And he's like, that's, that's fine. And so I go down to paint and, and I, I said, why am I putting a dragon in there? He said, what's the dragon doing? I said, it's flying towards me. And that's where he kind of left it. Like it wants to swoop down on the dragon. Absolutely. Yeah. Those that follow Christ be right, right. under attack. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. That's amazing. We're loving this. This is so beautiful. I know, is this good having both? This is yeah, incredible. It works cool. oh, yeah. The people at home get it to you're see putting, you point to stuff and then they see it close up, so it works good. Okay. You're putting eternities on the two surfaces, right? Past, present, future. Oh, go to this. Incredible. Um, which one to start? This is just two dimension. Okay, go down. No, no, but he represents it. Go down. 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 It's just so incredible. Oh, this yeah, one. this way. This one. Oh, this one. I got to mention this one real quick. So this is um, red sky in the morning, sailor take warning. Yeah. <laughs> so this represents me. I'm out in the, you know, as parents, we get in trouble sometimes, and our kids, are they're lighting the way back home. Oh. So I'm in this storm. That's really good. Beautiful. And it was my, my kids and my wife that, we're lighting the way back. Are those the fireflies? 
in the jar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She's left a little fireflies. Yeah, I saw fireflies on my mission for the first time in South Carolina. I, oh my gosh, there's a whole field of them. And I stopped the car and I got out and I just ran through them. And just was like, <laughs> so cool. So there's a place in southern Utah called Coyote Gulch and it's a backcountry hiking trail. And it's a backcountry trail that people do. Mm-hmm. And in the summer, it's really cool. You can go down into the gulch at night. There's fireflies. Oh, oh wow. Really? They have this uh, Spanish Fork, too, that lays field. Oh, they're so, so you know what, I'm, if you've seen anything like that, that is so cool to see that. So I had my, my daughter Evie and my son Max posed for there. He's, he's laying on his back, he's, and that's his hat. Um, that's cool. But they were just hanging out, just fighting. Very cool. So that's your wife, laying down? No, his son. No, this is son. Max. The half son. My son Max. So he's he's laying on his back and his arms are back like this, I and see. they were just talking. I said just just talking out, and I was just taking video of him, kind of looking up at the stars. You know? yeah. <laughs> Milky Way. Okay, let's go to the. Okay, here's the first one. And you maybe just kind of go through these. This was the first day, and I wasn't going to do the third painting. I'd given up, and I had a very strong prompting um, just to go see if I could find a canvas that size, because the first one I had to order, because I, I couldn't find one that big. And I went up to it was Artist Corner up in Orem, and... I walked in just expecting to order one, and when I walked in the door, there was this gentleman. He's dark, dark skin, curly black hair, and he looked right into me when I walked in the door, and I noticed I noticed him, and he was just kind of walking around, and he'd look over at me every once in a while, and um, I asked the guy working there. I said, "Hey, I need a canvas six feet by four feet." He's like, "I got three in the back." I'm like, Are "You kidding me?" and so we went back and we, we had, it took 20 minutes to move everything to get out of the way so we could get to him. And we pulled one out and I walked up to the front and this gentleman with the black curly hair just said, wow, you must be painting something pretty important. I, I said, you have no idea. And I said, you want to see something cool? And he's like, yeah. And so I show him this painting, or the second one. And he just grabbed my phone and he started looking at that. And, he said, this is how I always pictured this, Lehi's dream. He's like, he's, I said, are you LDS? And he looked down and, and then he looked back up and he's like, yeah, back up. I haven't been for a while. And I was, I was a wreck. I was like, I don't want to do this. I, I, I don't have the energy. <laughs> um, and, It was like he just looked right into me. I said, I'm, I'm not really an artist. I just, um, I don't do this for a living. I don't, I'm a, a nobody in the art world. And he just said, you keep doing what you're doing. And he said, this helped me today. This, um, I'm glad I, I met you. <laughs> and the timing of that, I was, I was supposed to go pick up a, umbrella to from my son's football game and I drove to the university mall and I parked and Spirit said you, you need to go get your canvas so I had my trailer I had my trailer behind me and so I instead of going in to find a an umbrella I just went to the art place and had I gone in I, I would have missed that wow and I'll never forget that guy I wish I would have got his number but we helped each other. Oh yeah. And so I took the canvas home and it was only a hundred like a hundred and seventy five dollars. I went up to the front and he I said how much? I was expecting six hundred because that's what the first one cost and he 
said, well, normally they're 250, but we'll, like, 170, I think it was 175 or something like that. I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, sweet. Um, so, yeah, this was, and I was, I'm like, I don't know how this is supposed to look. And I just go down, and it's like he just, I, I always kneel down and pray before I start and invite him in. And I can actually feel him come into me. And I'm just painting. Just <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so this was this is represents the atonement. And my my question to him was, when you say Christ did everything He sees the Father do, what does that mean? And I I remember as a, even young at a young age thinking, why did God suffer? Why who chose that? You know why? Um, that's cool, but you know why? Why is it that? Why are things that way? And Thank you. this is what he showed me. So in the middle here, if you go to the next one, so this I had a um, I had a, uh, when I say dream, it means either I'm sleeping and sometimes I'm awake and I just. It just comes down like a download Amazing. almost. So, and I wanted to ask you that. to be good. So, is it is it a vision, a dream, or both? I've experienced all, mm -hmm. and it's. I asked him that because when I saw Eve, I was going down the freeway, driving down the freeway, like eighty miles an hour, and I have this experience. But I was able to drive and experience it at the same time. It was kind of interesting. Um. So this, um, I saw a, a man lying on an altar, and I was, it was kind of in an angle. His head was here. I could tell it was a man, um, but I couldn't really see his face. I just saw it kind of from the back at an angle. And this is the darkness. So the darkness would come like it does us here, and it would just swirl, swirl around to where I couldn't even see him. And then I'd see his hand, like, reach out of that calling to the light and the light would come and heal him and fix him teach him what the darkness does um, and the darkness would try to deceive him it would cause him pain suffering all of it everything we deal with here um, and it was this back and forth and I don't know how long that went on but I understood it was a long time and what he what they went through just to get us here when you have even a little understanding of that it's very humbling and you have a greater appreciation for what they've done for us did you explain you didn't explain yeah, who they so, are so Turn um, back to you. i'm still learning <laughs> and i'm not 100 percent sure okay but i believe this is the father the Son and the Holy Spirit, and so eventually the darkness just stopped, and it came over here how it is now, and the light said, "Are you satisfied?" And he's so mad, he just his time was up. There was a time set, and he he set the time, and. He was done, and he and the light said, "Are you satisfied?" And it was like he didn't want to answer, and like he was hiding, trying to think of something else. And he, and he had to admit, said, "Yes, this man's descended below all things. There's nothing else I can even think of." And it was like he started walking away, and he turned around, and he was referring to the man on the altar, and he said, "I I have to know why. Why would you go through all that?" And he turned and he, the man on the altar turned and he looked at me standing behind him. It was like he just looked into everything I was and said, because I love them all and I want all of them to have life and to experience this. And the light said, well, this man has done everything I've required of him as well in fixing everything and overcoming things and, you know, what we're, we're experiencing. And when it was completed, 
Um, it was like this light just shot out of the bottom of the altar and came down and and Christ is here because we have to go through Christ to get to the Father. So this is um, when it was completed, they it's like they went into where they are. But they're all connected with this light. And it was like the ripple effect of God just started going out. And it's revealing what things are. We decide our intelligence and the matter that is our spiritual matter. When the light went through things, it revealed what they were to me. I could see them. And if you scroll up, there's... Oh, well, this one doesn't have it. There's an is it, e eagle right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, a, there's a, a whale breaching right here. Mm -hmm. There's a horse. There's a ballerina. A flower and a butterfly. And there's a lion and a cub right here. That's the father and the son. There's a ship right here that, that represents the fishers of men. And they're wow. just on the wavy seas, having a rough time. And then this is the, so we start out with our spiritual creation, and then this is the process of our earth being created physically. Oh. This is the sun, this is Jupiter and Saturn, and all these things are being created. And this is the second coming. We'll be shown all of these things. What is the light coming down from the... Is Jupiter the, the starry planet right there? These? Yeah, what is that? Okay, so this is the a temple I saw. Um, it has a, a big temple in the middle. And it had 12 temples around it for the 12 tribes of Israel. And I'm not 100% sure if it's the Temple of Adam and Amun, but it's like the epicenter of where the Father and Son will dwell and during the millennium. And there was a reflection pool around the whole thing, and bridges going from the individual temples to the one in the center. And so the 12 tribes of Israel will do all their temple work and take it to the center. And it represents um, all things being circum circumscribed into one great hole and um, this is Adam descending down to the temple this is Enoch Noah Moses or Abraham Moses and Joseph Smith and they're all preparing the way for Christ to come and are those beams of light going to other temples and yeah. not the earth? okay and this is crazy, like I just, oh, cool. I don't know if there's any significance to that, but that's the Dallas, um, Phoenix, Salt Lake, Winter Quarters, Nebraska, um, Tennessee, South Carolina, that's Nigeria, um, <laughs> uh, Sweden, um, France, um, no that's Sweden, that's Spain, France. That's the temple in Jerusalem in the oh, back wow. there. You have the Georgia Atlanta temple in there. <laughs> 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 Gosh, just what, that what is this one over here? This is the Sweden temple. <laughs> there's oh, another temple there's a big by temple the portal. By the, oh, yeah, this one. Okay, that that's so this is the gateway to the celestial kingdom. That represents the veil. Oh. And this is the kingdom of God on the earth, that, wow. the celestial kingdom. Ugh, it's gorgeous. So it's one eternal round. We start with the atonement, creating things, the physical creation. We all come to earth and we all face a dragon. There's a dragon hidden in here. Here's his wings. Oh, yeah. And his neck and his oh, head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's breathing fire right here. Oh, wow. You can see it really good on that. It's yeah. so cool. Oh, my goodness. The one right above, it looks like, is it holding two banners or uh, under the star where you said it was like Enoch and the different... Oh, here? Yeah, but down the closest to the spire. Here? Yeah. That's Adam. Is that Adam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's first. He's yeah. the first dispensation. 
and then the and she's up in the So it's part. it's in succession of the dispensations. <clears throat> and I had no idea what that meant. I just and these are candlesticks. I said they they don't even look like people, but he said they're candlesticks. I have no idea what that means. Aren't we all so lucky that we know Carrie and him, like male, female, like this yeah, balance? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's it's incredible. Smart. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't this kind of remind you, Carrie Guthrie? Type oh, yeah. of what he's in the process. Yeah. 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 Let's see. I told him that. Okay, so the flowers are obviously represented to the lilies and the birds of paradise. Oh, and, the... oh, and these took forever. The grass. Oh, Me and my wife almost got divorced over this. <laughs> <laughs> over the grass? How long it took to paint the grass, oh my gosh. Each blade is one little stroke. I'd sit there for hours just, like, how do you make it look like you can walk into it? Wow. And it's just... And it does. It looks so real. It looks like carpet. It looks like it's better. It's it's it and it's, yeah. as it comes closer to you, they get longer and... Yeah. Like just the whole process of how do you make it look like like the different yeah lights it get smaller like and smaller as you go back. But it looks like oh if you walked gosh. into it, you would feel it bending under your feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the left corner? The lilies and stuff. Yeah. Oh, these. So I'm um, not quite done. The tree. And it's interesting, I'm like, why are we stopping right now? And I've captured it and I'm selling prints this way. And it's like, this is kind of where we're at. Um, he hasn't signed it, if you notice. This one's still, he's still working but, on it. But the birds of paradise and the, the, flat, the daisies and the lilies, do they represent certain things? That Probably. Specifically? I'm sure they, yeah. maybe you can teach me more about that. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and like this, I I was terrified of painting Eve. I the day I started. Oh, can you find the one where it shows this one? So this is Brittany. Oh, I gotta tell you this story. I was hoping she she was gonna try to make it today. Um, so I was when I saw this vision of Eve the first time. I didn't know why he showed me that and I didn't know it was I kind of wondered if I was gonna try and paint that but I, I'm like there's no way and so I, the second time I saw it he's like you're gonna this is going in the third painting and that's why I, I give I, I'm like I can't do that I'm not even gonna do it and he said I'll send someone to you that can be a model for Eve and I just, I thought that's going to end up with me getting slapped or something. <laughs> like I'm gonna, you know, how are you going to walk up to a girl and, hey, I had a vision of Eve and <laughs> you look like her, can I paint you? So in my mind, I'm like, oh, that's, I, I wasn't looking forward to that. <clears throat> but, um, so she had, um, when she gave birth to her second child, she um, went back into the hospital, I think a few weeks later and had a uh, sepsis infection. <coughs> and had a near-death experience and, or she did die and came back and um, through that experience she was, she felt, said she felt lonely because she didn't have anyone to share it with or to relate to and so she was praying to have someone come into her path that could help her understand some of the things she'd seen or to verify things she'd seen and her sister-in-law and one of, one of her friends both individually sent her a link to the video I made of the first painting um, and they said you've got to see this and so it's just like a four minute video of um, this a friend of mine in my ward he was going around doing friends for scouting donations and it was five minutes after I brought the first prints of the first painting and they're just sitting in my living room and he shows up and I opened the door and he says we're donate, getting money and he, and he stopped and he looked past me and he's like what is that? So he came in and I told him a little bit about it and I had been praying for someone that I can't, I, I can't make a video, I don't know how to do that. And I, I had my little brother uh, set, build me a computer specifically for that, for editing videos and things and I made a couple videos and tried it and I'm like I, I just can't do this, I'm not, I'm not good at this. 
you're gonna have to send someone to help me do this because I can't I tried it and so he called me the next day his name's Adam Belinsky and he he said I, the spirit told me I'm supposed to help you make a video of your painting and I was just I'm like Are you kidding me and so he, we got together and made this video and the camera was straight ahead of me right in front of a wall and he was sitting over here and he'd ask me questions and I was supposed to talk to the camera but I would I'd, I'd turn to him and he's like cut <laughs> so it was like an hour of just trying to get enough material to make a decent video but he did a beautiful job um, despite my <laughs> my acting abilities aren't very good um, so the first painting is how I met Brittany um, to be the model for even the third painting. So she saw the video that I made? <clears throat> so she saw the video and she had a prompting to get in touch with me and she said she just kept sweeping it under the rug. She never, but she, she did um, make a comment on the painting or the video and she liked it and her little icon stood out to me in you know, a little circle that has yeah. your picture. Um, so I paid attention to that and then two weeks later I, I was just going through Facebook and I saw her, I, I, it, the picture was cut off here, I could only see her chin but she was holding a painting she'd just done and it was hands delivering a, a baby and there were spiritual hands on the outside of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw the painting and then I saw her little icon and I'm like, oh she's an artist. And the spirit you know, directed me to go onto her page and start looking at some of her <coughs> artwork. and. And I came across this picture of her in her feed, <clears throat> and I stopped. I'm like, that is exactly the expression Eve had. And <clears throat> this this was while she was having this prompting to get in touch with me, and I got in touch with her. Wow. And I said, I have to. I had this. I told her what happened. I had this vision of Eve, and this. I need this picture. And um, she just lives in Springville. Oh, wow. For heaven's sake. So I, she, I private messaged her and she private messaged me back. She's like, oh my gosh, I've been meaning to get in touch with you. And <laughs> um, cool story. And so we, we had dinner and talked about everything. And um, if you go, I think there's the next one. Yeah, this is wow. when we did the photo shoot of her holding the fruit. And this is a, it's a little foam ball, and he showed me how to do this. He said, take a flashlight, take the light out of it, hook the batteries up, and then run, run that light up into this foam ball that I had dug out and made look like a piece of fruit. And, and then I put a switch on it so you could switch it on and off. Mm. And so it's just tied to her arm back here, and the light's up in the foam. Mm. And then we had an a incense candle that smoke was coming up and it, oh my gosh it looked it was perfect <laughs> i was just sitting there i can't believe this is exactly how i saw this and she's actually standing in front of a painting in this picture <clears throat> where eve goes that's so cool now when you saw eve in your vision did she say anything to you or did she communicate anything to oh you? yeah you so what? um <laughs> she was standing at the tree with her back to me and she just reached up and and picked a piece of fruit off the tree and turned around and walked up to me and that's what I saw. She's offering mm -hmm. um, the fruit from the tree of life after she's returned to it. So she's gone through this life and gone through the sorrow and everything. And um, The second time I saw this, I she invited me to look in it, into it. And when I looked into it, I saw parts of her life and I could feel, I could feel everything, I could see everything, it was like I was, she was sharing this with me very intimately, and um, I saw her with Cain and Abel, like just scenes of her with her kids playing and having a lot of a good time, and then I saw her holding Abel's dead body, mm. just we, we, wailing. So did you take her the fruit and eat it? <laughs> yeah. Um, that's symbolic. So, um, and, and when I saw that, she said, not everyone chooses the light. 
It's like we just, you have to be okay with that and you just have joy with the ones that do. And you always, and that's when I felt her love for Cain. And I'm sure she visits him and they still have a relationship. And her desire is for all of us to, to come and partake of this fruit. I think that's really wonderful how you brought out this fact that she still loves Cain. Because I had never thought of that. And yet, when we have children that... You never have thought Yeah, when we have children that fall, or that, you, you, you can't, you don't stop loving them. Mm -hmm. Even God. <laughs> <coughs> I've had some really sacred experiences where I knew that Eve was going to be our witness also for she too was deceived, as we all are. So right. she will stand with her daughters and sons, knowing that she chose life. It was her gate and choice because it was going to be her body as the heaven's gate for life to come through. So she got to make that decision, even though she's demonized. She brought life and she had the courage and bravery to do that. It's amazing. Yeah, and this is interesting. Um, so, in the garden, it talks about Adam um, before Eve comes into the picture. And I, I believe that in that moment they are one. And when God has Adam fall asleep, he takes the rib out, he's separating them. And he's separating them to go through this life. And the goal is to go through these things and come back together as one. Right. And so that separation of him taking the rib out, it means that you know we come here and we fight and we push against each other and we sometimes we get divorced and we have all these things we go through. But when we keep that covenant, <clears throat> the new and everlasting covenant, that represents us coming back to the tree as one. <coughs> what is the little waterfall? That's the living waters. <coughs> that it talks about that in the Lehi's dream, the okay. fountain of water coming. Okay. On her dress, it almost looks like it has a. <coughs> we have the seam in the front. Um, that was just a dress we found at the. <laughs> I was right. looking for a dress that had the sleeves. And that was the one I just found at the, <coughs> I think it's Taylor's down in Provo. They rent costumes down there. But it looks like there's a tree right in her bosom. <coughs> like a tree of life right yeah. on her chest. Yeah. There's probably things about the, her, how she looks that I just don't know. Like that. That's cool. Leads right up to her heart, which right. is different. There's the heart shock. Christ energy. I love the story you told me about the tree on painting that you didn't know how to go approach it and how you did the back, the middle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, my, how to make it look kind of 3D. And I'd, I'd never really even tried painting a tree, so I, I drew one. Go to the one that has the... I actually put the... And I... I did a pencil sketch of the tree. I pulled up the, a picture of the angel oak. Let's see, it's... Not the other way. We may have missed one. <coughs> we may have missed one. Oh, oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, this is an altar right here. Where is it? On each right there's here. an altar? Oh, it's, it's in the back. Right there. Um, I know it's oh, there. Like hewn rock. It's kind of hidden. Um, yeah, it's right here. So this is um, the altar that I saw here, and it's just it's just there. Is that the altar Adam built? He said, I know yeah, it's, why the Lord it's the altar that we all know. It represents a lot of things. Uh, the rod of iron coming up out of the world. Here. Oh, oh, yeah, I didn't see that. Oh, oh my light. gosh, that's so awesome. There's a big part of light awesome. right there in the middle of that yeah. rod, right? So, Where it ends? Yeah. Kind of self-illuminating. 
maybe we can be self-reliant and let go of, I mean, we still have it within us. That's where it becomes the fleshy tables <coughs> in our hearts and we go towards a tree. Yeah, so this is the East Coast right here. This is the Grand Canyon, Lake Powell. These are our mountains, Salt Lake Temple, Salt Lake. So it goes cool. all across to so this continent. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> That's really powerful to end the light and there's still a distance to go being self illuminated. That's right. Did you guys hear the um, Talking Scripture podcast, The Space Between the Trees? That was so good. It was so good. Oh. But this is this is sort of ending the story. She was the first tree the tree of knowledge, and here she is closing the space between the trees at the tree of life. It's really significant if you've heard that Talking Scripture podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting how in the second painting, the, when I had that dream, I could see the tree of life on the horizon, this huge tree, but I also, um, the other tree was there as well. And it's almost like you have to experience the tree of knowledge of good and evil and almost pass through it to get back to the tree of life. Yep, right. And it's just this one eternal, you know, when he says one eternal realm, it's, that's what we're doing. Well, TJ, what they say in that, in that come follow me is they say the space between the trees is repentance, mm -hmm. which is what you painted in picture number two. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's cool how it all ties together. Why yeah. do they say it's what? The it's repentance. repentance. Oh, the space okay. between yeah. the tree of knowledge and the oh, tree of life is repentance. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. You guys are really <laughs> expanding my... <laughs> you know, right? That's what these women do. <laughs> I think That's we've good. covered most of it. Well, thank well, you. Well, tell us how, how do we get oh, yeah, one, one of these in our Oh, I, I didn't really plan on selling well, we would like, them. Well, we would like one. So, TJ, yeah, like, so how about out, you get right? some prices yeah. for me, and I'll send it out to everybody and see if anybody wants to order. So, I don't know. I imagine the Lord might send somebody to help me do this, but I, I'm not... As far as like selling them, a, a lot of them, I'm not set up to do that. But if you can get me your, the size you want. Um, what size is this? So one this right? one is three feet tall, and I think it's 52 inches wide. Hey, TJ, we'll put, the, I think this will be easiest. We'll just put, he, I told him last night, whatever he wants, we will provide in show notes. And so we'll do it so that people can see examples and know what to do. And then if you could get things out to, to your people, but I actually helped Arnold Freeberg on some of his stuff. I know there's a way to do it. I just I, haven't I can really you thought of it. That. Yeah, well, let's um, let you get your ducks in a row, and then we can... Uh, well, would it help if one of us was a point of contact for everyone so that you're not dealing with everyone? That might be helpful. Well, that's why I said I could do, I could do that for you. I could uh, uh, navigate someone to have it to Wait, put together, then you to her. I keep going. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah, I, this is all just starting now. In fact, this is this will oh, be this cool is... to end with this. Um, so, before I got invited to go to BYU um, to have this third painting, and that's where I met. That's where I met you guys. Um, I wasn't sure how to put it out there. I didn't know what he had in mind. I was, if you wanted to leave it up to me, I just, it, that was kind of always up in the air. And I um, got to a point where I was like, we got to do something, I'm, I'm done. And, and he, he said, this is just for you and your family. And my first reaction was, really? <laughs> Um, and I had a hard time with that for, for a long time. And so I just, and, and it was something about, I, I was kind of projecting this on the people. Like I'd, I'd be in Wendy's or something and, Hey, you want to see something cool? And I'd show it to him and it's always cool. You know, start a good conversation, but it was just, that's you going out, doing it on your own. And when he leads people to me, I've had, I've had two women 
just walk up, total strangers walk up to me and say, I'm supposed to come and talk to you. Mm. And the Lord says, Sean, and it's all on my phone, and I just pull it out, and we have this experience. And on that, I won't forget any of them. They're um, this spiritual connection that we that this provides for us to have a conversation about these things. And they're drawn to things in the painting, and when they, like if they point out something over here, it's like that kind of tells me what they're thinking about and what, what they're going through. And so that lets me know what to share with them. And it's an experience I've had or something I've seen in it. And they help me too, like they answer prayers when, they, when we talk or they'll point something out I didn't, I didn't see. And so I think they're supposed to be a tool just to get people thinking about remembering you know, why we're here. Absolutely mm-hmm. breathtaking stunning. what you put yeah. in here. So, so much truth. You know, so I, just, yeah. I know truth, but it's just like. Um, so it was about six months, and I, I just, he said, people need to ask you. Like, there's a reason I say you have to knock, and they'll knock at the door, or ask, and you'll receive. And so he said, you know, you can't just go do it. You know, I'm directing this. Yeah. And and at that time, there was a <clears throat> um, Jalen Pryor. She's the one that invited me to be in the art the art gallery at BYU. And we had made an appointment. Um, it was probably about six months. It was during this time where I was like, "What are we doing?" And I was so excited for her to come because I'm like, "Oh, sweet, this is it." And um, the meeting got canceled and some things came up and and I was like ah oh. and and he said this is just for you and your family and it took me six months to be okay with that and I was sincerely okay with that and I think that's what he wanted he, he wanted just you to be okay with I it. thought well what if the only thing that happens is I save my own family I'm like how cool is that and that I didn't think of that And then the BYU thing did come to fruition. How did that come about? So six months later, she called um, this friend I have named Cynthia Giles. I had done some work on her home, and I was prompted to show her all of this. And she just, she's like, you guys, um, she connect, her gift is she connects people. Um, and she um, was friends with Jalen Pryor, and, and she told her about him, but she didn't show her the painting. And so Jenny Lynn just said she's, she called um, Cynthia and said, I, I have to come see it. So she called and, and made the appointment and we met and we were probably down there for two and a half hours just me explaining all this. And so I was invited and I thought, I thought this was just for my family. And he just said, I had to know that you were okay with that. And because it was, I mean, it's, um, staying humble is <laughs> hard sometimes I just I don't know how to say things without um, being up here I don't know I, I had to work through that um, all of those things you know wanting tons of money wanting all these things and had I gotten them then I would have used them for other things but now it's just I just want to share this with people and that's what I'm here to do and in the first painting I asked him I wanted to see myself in the pre-existence who I was and I was sharing my light and that's what I'm doing now I'm doing it here that's beautiful yes. <laughs> thank you so much well I'm not done I gotta share one more thing okay Ooh. okay it's short so after um, this all started and I was getting ready for to do the fireside at BYU on Sunday. Um, he showed me what we're doing and you can place yourself in my place, any of you, because it represents all of us. And so I was standing here and I saw in front of me, he was standing next to me and he put his right hand on my left shoulder and we both knelt down and there was an edge of a cliff in front of us and it was everything black 
I couldn't see anything. And we knelt down and, and he, he said, I want you to reach down and touch the edge of that cliff. And I understood that it, it wasn't any power I had within myself. It was, that's why he was touching my shoulder because it was him. And, and I was like kind of giddy. I was like, really? And I reached down and I touched it and this little spark happened and it just started lighting up. Mm. And it was people. And it, every once in a while, one would light up. He's like, you're not gonna get to everyone, but there's a handful of people that you can touch and, and help them improve their lives. And, mm. and it just kept going. And as far as I could see, and every once in a while there'd be a light and he's like, you'll have an influence on some people. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. all. And that's awesome. all of us, all of us have yeah. a spark. We can, yeah. you know, have a ripple effect, go mm -hmm. out and influence others. Yeah, but you were humble enough, right? <laughs> to let his hand touch you, <laughs> to receive that information, to be refined, to put it on a paper, like, just incredible. Yeah. What a cool experience! And wow! Oh, yeah. I just what if I because I was saying no. I was everything in me. I'm like, hey, you got the wrong guy. Like, I don't know he anything the right about guy. the gospel. In fact, I'm fighting you. Like, why? Why would you come to me? You know, and I just that was my system. only way out. That was of where I was. Yeah. And well, you've blessed us. Yes. Oh, and yes. you, me. <laughs> Mike, will you zoom in on, see where the star is, and right next to it is red. The dragon? Yeah. Here. Right? To the left. To the left. To the left. Yeah. Can you pull it down just a little bit? Okay. Okay. Okay, because what I see when the first thing it came up is I see a hand in a circle. I didn't like it. Like it's the earth. Oh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. the world yes. In his hand. And uh huh. That is because God has told me over and over. Where? Uh, right there. I hold your hand. The Lord's hand. Yeah. 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 Well, those are that's the living waters. It's but, the, but the waters look like his arms. You know, yeah. Going into the hand. Like the, the waves. Yeah. Oh, even though you can tell they're oh, waves, they also look like his arms. So you organize the waters above and the waters below. Oh, okay. You need to check. Oh, and this is um, um, personal like revelation. No. I love that eagle. That eagle. Is the so the cool. prophets have been. Inviting us to receive our own personal revelation for a long time. Right. Yeah. And just the timing of all this, how we're um, learning about the Garden of Eden and the beginning all right now, and this is when he's choosing to let this out. Yeah. It's that little dot of light at the end of that. You know, if you've been trying to follow his word, follow his teachings, and do all that you can, you know, the best ability and the repentance. But then he illuminates individuals, us, whoever, but to move forward. Oh, there is a, um, a father standing right here in the doorway. Oh, Helena. <laughs> because a terrestrial. Right? And everywhere there's a father, there's a mother. Right. Is that a family right there? Yeah. In line right here? Uh-huh. Yeah. And what's the brown part? Oh, there it's you your go. face. So this is a tree. This is um, like a wall that goes up. And then I I always, um, I saw like people are waiting there in line, but they're, they're like giants almost. And I love how you made the entrance to the celestial kingdom with the veil going through it. Looks like a portal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it does. you're being transferred to a yep. new dimension. Mm -hmm. you know, I love that. It looks like a read the portal hole. Yeah. Oh, and when I painted that, I had this brush, one of my favorite brushes. It was long, uh -huh. and I forgot to wash it off, and it hardened like that. And when I painted, 
um, this, I used that brush and I just got paint on it and I just went like this. And the same thing here, I used that brush to do all this. It's like that brush had hardened for a reason and I, I had a lot of fun with it after that, just wow. learning how to paint things the way they look. The, the church has um, asked us to have a, a painting of the temple um, and the Savior in our homes. And I've often believed it's because it opens a portal of light into right. our home. Mm -hmm. That is the perfect example to show people when they don't understand what you're saying, right. that that is what the temple in Christ would look like, bringing all that light energy yeah. into our homes. Right. And I love how you captured light in your painting. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. So I was on a cruise, and I on the cruise there was an exhibit of, a, what's his name, Kincaid? Yeah, Thomas, oh, Thomas Kincaid. Kincaid. Yeah. yeah. And I walked through there, and the spirit was like, "You need to stay here for a while." And I just sat there. They all went to dinner, and they're like, "Where's he?" Here? You know. And I'm, I'm back here learning. The way he uses light is he says, "Yes." Notice how he darkens the whole painting, so the light areas are seem lighter. And I was just sitting there looking at how he did that, and that helped me a lot. Like looking at other artists. And he'd, he'd put me in these situations. Like, I didn't even know there was an exhibit on the cruise. We're just walking to dinner, and I walked through there, and I learned so much in, like, a half know. hour just looking at And the Lord's saying, look how he uses the light and how things are darker. And right. There's a lot of dark in these paintings. Like there they, is, but it's... When they print these, it oh. takes, like, 20 minutes because of all the colors in it. Yeah. Can you speak to the leaves right in the center front of the trees that are just kind of hanging down is that this the moss the yeah. moss is that moss okay so the when you when you see the angel oak oh wow they they're covered in moss okay. yeah we have i came wow. from monterey and there were oak trees and there was the moss peat moss hanging down yeah. all, all okay. the time so that's the Yeah, it's a beautiful tree. If you just Google it, it's just um, angel oak. But that's... Yeah. that's oh, it. my gosh. Oh, wow. Can I take a picture of your picture? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. That's amazing. No wonder you wanted that. And that is called the angel oak. That's South Carolina. Yeah. An angel oak. Yeah, if you just, there's several, pit, if you Google it, there's several pictures from different angles. Wow. So you can see the whole. Yeah, it's. Oh, that's pretty much just pulled up really pretty. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. Look, how, look how big it is. Oh my gosh, it's huge. In Mississippi and New Orleans, we went down for months ago, and there's just tons of trees like that. Is it, it's in? A, is that you? Because no, but oh, that's I thought you said we just went down, down there. We just went down to and tons of guy. pictures of trees like that. Oh, oh, I, we did some drone shots. Do you have any idea of the age of that tree? Because it looks like well over 100 years. Oh, man. Oh, wow, we went way over. Oh, okay. That was, is that okay? Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Who's going to want to watch it? And if you edit They'll break it, it up. we can make it a lot better. Okay. We'll, we can smooth things out. But okay. it's, per it's great. People loved it. It connected perfect all the time. And so. Yeah, and I don't... I asked if I should prepare anything, and he says, no, just I'm going to guide it. And it's based off of who I'm talking to, the questions you ask, the direction it goes. Mm -hmm. And every meeting's different, and it's so cool <laughs> connecting with people. He's been doing firesides around different places. Well, I've right? done one. This oh, just one. this all okay. just started oh, Sunday. Oh. <laughs> well, the gallery this was in was in October, like October eighth. That's when <laughs> this birthday. all started. That was my spark. Do you want to come to There's Southern Utah? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he heard you. I think you want to come to Southern Utah. Do I what? Do you want to come to Southern Utah? <laughs> oh, actually, my mom's from St. George. We have a house down there. Oh yeah. Where is it you live? 
between uh, Kanab and Panguitch. That was on Duck Creek, right? I live on the top of Cedar Mountain. Oh, okay. Yeah, we go to Lake Powell, down to Wawi, Lake Powell all the time. That's my house. Do you want to give out your email? Give it out? Yeah. On national tele no. <laughs> um, Maybe not. I, you, I can give it to you guys. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, if you want to print, just let me know that. So how it works is uh, this this painting is six feet long by four feet tall, so it's four to six is the ratio. So the diagonal has to be the same or it's skewed. So if you if you know the width, that kind of determines the height. So the ratio is four to six. So and the, the middle painting, the second painting's um, three to four. So it's a little shorter. Um, it was just the canvas. I wish I would have done it the same size as these, but it was just one I had and I, I just started it. Well, TJ, let's you and I, you, maybe you could get some prices on, you know, eight by 10 or 11 by 14s or see what you can get pricing wise. I want and big. Then, <laughs> you gotta go to see it all. I know, I know. Oh, so we yeah. include, include How much is something one? like that on the foam board? So this cost, um, all three of them were 750 oh. just to have them printed. Like that's how much it cost me. Mm -hmm. And when I, I've given them away, like people that can't afford them, I just, and he lets that happen. Like I don't really care about the money. I mean, I have to provide my family, but. <laughs> I would rather people have them in their home and being able to see them. And share them so, with other people. So I, I was working at was Stephen Hale's Creative at the time, but we did, Arnold Freeberg had never really digitally, did, and the church owned a lot of his artwork. He did an exhibit that they were showing up at the church office building, but they took each of them and they shot them. And I was there to get shot perfectly, and then a printing resource printed them, but to get all the three quarter tones and everything perfect, it's really hard to try to translate from start to finish and get it right, but they did a, a great job. Yeah, but and these are the these are the prints that Altus Fine Arts is doing all my prints, so they're, and they, they, did, they give me a proof sheet to take home and I sit in front of this for hours and just <laughs> make sure all the colors are right, because the colors all have meaning and their symbolism. Mm -hmm. and, and so the second painting, I had to have them do it three times to get it right. So the fourth one you're doing, tell them just really quick about that. Oh, again. I have no idea what. But what are your thoughts about it? Just so my, my, and I can do them or not. I think these three paintings, he said you can be done if you want, but I don't know. I'm, it, it's a collage of all these different experiences and how they come together is, and this is crazy, like most of the paintings, um, two thirds of the painting is light, and one third is darkness. And that was without intention. That yeah, I just I'm sitting here looking. I'm like, oh my gosh, if you were to take square inch and just this is light, this is this is dark, this is dark. You know, it's wow. Um, There's math in everything. Interesting. Yeah, he said he would do it. That's so beautiful. Oh. I think the whole lesson in contrast is the beauty. That that's how <laughs> beauty is created, and so the bad is the blessing. But it does, it's not really bad. It gets necessary. If, if you're going to do another painting down the road, I would love to talk to you because in my life I, I went on a mission and I went completely atheist. And there was that scripture, if any man lack wisdom, and I had some hours all alone. And and I had the chance. I was I thought, okay, this is what we're done, I'm going home and leaving this mission. But that scripture just kept in my mind and I said, Okay, I got a fifty fifty chance here. <laughs> and I had studied yoga so I knew how to put my mind in neutral because that scripture also says let him do this in faith, nothing wavering. So at least when you don't believe in God at that moment, I could put my mind in neutral where I would accept either negative or positive. And then I started talking to the air and I said, you know, if there's a God, you're, you're either listening and if there isn't, I'm just talking to the air anyway. <laughs> and after about an hour of being on my knees, uh, something amazing happened. And I had... Uh, I had some arms 
come around behind me. And, you know, I was expecting, if, if God were there, I, would, I was thinking maybe an angel or something, but it was more like someone took a, a thumb drive and plugged it in and just dragged and dropped everything. And I got this instant download. And I, the only way to talk about it is to use words, but it was beyond words. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I, I am here, I'm as real as you are. I have never left you. And I love you more than you will ever know. And once I got that, I realized I had five questions always in my mind from childhood. And I was elated. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the man. I said, I said, can I ask these questions? Absolutely. You, you're asked, you're knocking, I'm going to tell you. OK, is it possible that we came from nothing? Is it possible that we could become nothing? And here's the big one. Who started existence? The next one is, how can you love everyone? There's some really bad people out there. <laughs> and the next one was, how do you know everything that's going on everywhere? And the last one, if we go through this life and we do everything and we get bored with life, what's our final destination? And so I had this amazing answer and it said, I, I, I made notes. I'm going to give you every one of these answers in detail. I was like, really? <laughs> in my own time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the first answer I got, I, I guess when you're in a shower and the warm water is just dripping on you, there was this little window in the shower, actually, and I'm looking, it was a frosted window, and I was just staring at this thing and letting the light wash over me, and I'm just, I went into neutral. And then, I had this great vision. I saw a field similar to what I'm looking at here. It was a field with uh, water flowing through it, a tree, and, and there were grass, and, and deer, and rabbits, and, and all of a sudden, like you were talking about, everything was transparent. I saw the, the sap flowing through the tree, the grass had stuff, the rabbit's heart was beating, the, the, the deer, everything. All the molecules, the, the, everything in the rocks, it was just, and, 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 and that was like, and it hit me like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this is how you know everything? And, you and then the answer was, transparent. that's just the field. Imagine mm -hmm. where you live, imagine the state, imagine your country, imagine your planet, now imagine the entire universe. I felt that small. And the next one that hit me was, how do you love everyone? And I, I was still a missionary, and I went to this Halloween party, and I walked in, in fact, with my companion, who's around the corner. We walked in, and I'm just standing behind the curtain that's, that separates the chapel and the cultural hall, and there was about 200 people there, and I'm just leaning up against that curtain, and it hit me again. And I had the deepest love for every one of those people that I love I'd never felt before. And it was just, again, just a brief second. And it was so heavy, and, and that love was so amazing, I, I, I was embarrassed. I had to turn around and act like I'm tying my shoe while the tears are flowing. And, you know, someone looks over and goes, there's a missionary crying? Why? It's a party. <laughs> it was so overwhelming. And, and I won't get into all the other answers, but I, I started to realize how God talks to us. And this is like, whoa, well, this is cool, because I would hear testimony meetings where, you have to get a burning in the bosom. And I was like, that's a pile of, I've never, but then I finally realized how it works. And one of the last ones I got was, I was on a preparation day, doing my laundry, minding my business, and I picked up this stationery, and I thought, I'm gonna write my friend a letter. Dear Dan, I just wanted to know what it's like here on my mission, and I want you to know what the beginning of life was. And I started writing 25 pages that explains to me where it all began, how God did all of this, what coming to Earth's purpose was, and what our final destination was. 25 pages later, I was blown away. I thought, this, I, I didn't know all of this. This is so amazing. So I'm extremely excited. Being here is amazing because when they give you the commandment to love one another, that's just a little practice 
of what mm -hmm. happens, and I see all of your life, and what happens to each one of us is when we ascend to a higher level, we have a small intelligence inside of us. It's this glowing light that's always existed. And God went and said to that, hey, I'd like to invite you in, and I'm going to give you forms so that you can interact with one another and a language. So we got a spiritual body, which was made up of light, basically. And then the only way to continue was to let the entire universe as we know it flow through us, and that's why we have to eat and, and have, feel pain and have this physical body. But we're still so used to being in a box. We've got this shell, this box holding our brain and our thinking like that process. That rock he painted on the guy's head. <laughs> but the next step is God, we, we get to step into his world where that light energy inside of us, it, it goes out in every direction from our, our center. Like he's showing and that, and, and every one of us do that, and all of our thoughts and our emotions and feelings all intertwine as a fabric. And if we are not there to keep our thoughts and our kindness and our love at a higher level, then we're, we're not allowed to be in that area. And that's, I watch this darkness, and I'm like, yeah, I totally understand that. that they have to remove your ability to shine in all directions and put you somewhere else so you won't disturb everyone. And that's why we get these commandments to love one another and love God because we're all going to interact and all our emotions and love become one. It's, so, so I've got to show you this, this now. <laughs> that's, that's cool. And this to me is, it's a hand with a small light. Yeah. This to me would represent God talking to an intelligence saying, Hey, you've been around for Did trillions of years. Yeah. No, I, it's a picture. It's, uh, yeah. But, but this is what it means. You've been around it. for trillions of years, and I'm going to give you some experience if you would like to really turbocharge this whole experience for yourself. This is cool. Mm -hmm. What is what is this going to be? <laughs> so it's just, I just, he showed me this. So it's the seed of the tree of life. That's how it all begins. Oh. It's a, it's so, a hand with a little teeny light on it. So, uh, let's see, I, I'll have to, there was a saying that came with it. Watch the cord when you step over there, too, so you don't get trip on okay. it. <laughs> it would be fun, though, to share some ideas and see how, about how let's have him in February. I couldn't carry on for hours. Oh, yeah. oh, don't believe me. I don't One believe word that. Of that. Either. He you you just wrote 25 pages that would be interested in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's very creative, too. And he's I, 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 I tried to write some of those pages, you know, transfer them. I don't think I've finished, because it's a lot of work to do that and yeah. make sure you yeah. do it clean. But I, I did throw a bunch of thoughts from all of that onto a website that I call a book of dreams.com but I got hit by Chinese just not a, a week ago and I, I went to some of my pages and there's Chinese all over it's like you got to be kidding me wow. so I'm right in the middle of, of rebuilding that website it's up now but I don't trust it because some of the drop down menus aren't working right so it's clean it doesn't have any Chinese stuff anymore but they broke something so I'll probably redo it but I have I have some of that that I was talking about, I tried to detail okay, that so out. Yeah. Because re okay. remember when they said share? Okay. You know, I thought, well, okay. what am I doing with all of this stuff? Exactly. I better at least put it out there cool. so I can share it. Yeah. Yeah. the idea. But this is visual, and this is so cool. If you could okay. put some of the stuff I got with some of his the artwork. The pickerings are coming to record at our house. The what? pickerings are coming. So we're not, we just got to tear down. Oh, that's fine. I'm a, I'm a, I do media production. Okay. Is that good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.